Oriole players now taking the field. Pitchers, starting pitchers, have been out warming up for about uh, 10 minutes. Gary Thorne, Jim Palmer, back here with you. And after the rain delay, thunderstorms going through. Jim, looks like we're going to get this fourth game and final game of the year, regular season, between these two teams in here tonight. Yeah, everything's just backed up. Uh, it was one of those days they didn't hit on the field. Uh, the Orioles didn't hit on the field uh, yesterday either because of the weather. It was very about 95. So everything's backed up an hour. Same routine. Maybe you've maybe eat a little bit different when you come in you figure okay well we're probably not going to change the great thing about playing now it used to be when the rain stops the rain will stop now you have the radar you get it uh, some kind of idea of when the game's going to start so uh, it'll be just normal but it'll be uh, starting a little later tonight so you eat a little differently up here in the booth when you have these uh, rain delays more often more often <laughs> <laughs> more often way too much or more of the stuff that you well, wouldn't need when the yankees are in town oh no. There are a lot of people. Their entourage, you know, that's there. Better get it before they do. That's really what that, it comes down this to. This has been a feedback day, and all I needed was to have an extra hour. <laughs> and I took full advantage of it. All right, as we get ready here with the teams warming up, uh, Mariana Rivera is going to be recognized here tonight by the Orioles with a special presentation to be made by the ball club. There is Mariano, who's come out and is waiting here. Buck Walter said before the game, you know, I'm going to go out there out of respect for him and because I personally like him but you know this is hard for me I mean we're still he's an opponent I don't usually get involved in these sorts of things when we're playing the other team and have anything to do with what's going on but obviously in this situation this is different this is a special occasion so he said of course I want to go out there and be part of it well he, yeah and again he was managing when Mariano uh, came to the big leagues as a Yankee back in 1995 and I think kind of like when you pitch uh, and when you're facing Aaron and you're facing Mays, it's not that you don't respect him, but your job is to get him out. His job is to beat the Yankees as a manager. And so while he has great respect, and all of us do, I mean, you, you will not find anybody that has been this good, this humble, has the kind of grace that he has had over the course of his career. All right, let's go to Ryan Wagner, our PA announcer. Now time for a special on-field presentation. During spring training, we learned that one of the game's most dominant and well-respected closers would be retiring after this season. Renowned for his great cut fastball, he has been a true competitor and professional both on and off the field. Earlier this year, as he has done in every visiting city this season, he took time to meet with several members of the Orioles organization who worked behind the scenes to thank them for their hard work and to learn more about their careers. On the field, he's earned 40 or more saves in nine seasons, tying the all-time Major League record. And he currently stands as baseball's all-time saves leader with 651 saves. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Yankees closer, number 42, Mariano Rivera. Manager Buck Showalter is here to congratulate Mariano and present him. And present him with a bronze sculpture of a bat breaking. In honor of the countless number of bats Mariano shattered over the course of his remarkable 19 year career. The bat was sculpted by Amri Amrani and his son Itamar of the Fine Art Studio of Rockblatt Amrani in Highland, Illinois. And the inscription on the plaque reads, Mariano Rivera, baseball's all-time saves leader, who pitched 19 seasons for the New York Yankees. His numerous baseball records are surpassed only by his humility, respect, and philanthropy. Presented by the Baltimore Orioles in recognition of his tremendous career and the hundreds of bats he broke along the way. Once again, we congratulate Mariano on an outstanding career, and we wish him all the best in his retirement. Thank you.
So there you go with a hug for the manager, a tip of the cap for the opposing team, and a wave to the crowd. Mariano Rivera receives his award. There are the career numbers that he's had against the Orioles, and all the Orioles hope is that's the last time he's on the field tonight. Well, yes, and uh, what it, as we showed you in one of our little breaks, uh, Buck said I'd love to give him a blown save for tonight. But, uh, you know, a marvelous career. And, and this is what makes the game. People come along and uh, over a course of 19 years have this kind of a career. And, he, and I can't say it. it Never showed the guy up, just got him out. That's your job, and uh, did it with tremendous uh, grace. The Orioles, while he posted those uh, great numbers against the Orioles, the Orioles actually did fairly well against Mariano Rivera as far as defeating him in some ball games and coming away with blown saves over his career as Rivera against the Orioles overall has a record of 8 and 9 and uh, 79 out of 88 in the save situations. So the umpires are coming out. The going to have the lineups exchanged here. As we said, when you're in the final series of the regular season, the decision on playing or not playing a ball game is left to the umpires. They are always in contact. Both teams are involved in discussions with them and they also with the office in New York because these games especially this game these types of games are so important Jim because it clearly affects what's going to go on at the uh, end of the season. Yeah, nobody wants to come back and play a, a makeup game on Monday because it would be tremendous uh, inconvenience for both the ball clubs as you mentioned earlier both of them on the road so you'll stay here as long as it takes you uh, said you don't like to use the word window but I hope it's a big picture window yes you know bay window expansive uh, for at least three and a half hours because that's typically the way the games we've seen that's how long it's about it's going to take that's to play right. this yeah now the Yankees did make a change uh, David Huff had been the scheduled starter uh, right up until the conclusion of the ball game last night Jim and then they make the decision that Hughes will take his place and be their starter tonight well he's four and 13 but like I mentioned in one of our little uh, vignettes uh, he is one and nine at home so he pitches much better away I mean this is a guy that won 16 games last year they haven't gotten him a lot of runs or he'll hope that stays in tune tonight because we've seen that this is a different Yankee team when then the Orioles have seen yeah. as you mentioned they're nine and nine haven't won a series uh, all the way since they went wire to wire talking about the Orioles 1997 so not only is it a big game in that respect but it's just a big game because the only thing and this is the one thing the Orioles have not been playing good baseball but they need to win just about every time out and that's the one thing they can control so right. play better tonight that's right then if they get it again everything will look entirely different than what it did after the loss of the Ball game last night. So the pregame ceremonies as they recognize the final player who will wear number 42. It has been retired, of course, except for Mariano. He receives the award from the O's, and we've got baseball coming up.
brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. Back at Camden Yards with hopefully the rain gone for the evening. Take a look at our train game time temperature. It really dropped today. It was up in the mid-90s for at least half the day, down to 75 at game time tonight under cloudy skies. Train celebrating its 100th anniversary by offering irresistible financing. It's hard to stop a train really hard. Here's the New York Yankees starting lineup. Gardner, Rodriguez, and Soriano. Cano, Wells, Nunez, Reynolds, Ryan, and Stewart. And A-Rod has made a difference in this series over the three games played. And our scouting report on the 28-year-old left-hander out of Taiwan. Well, better command. He had two games. He's had ten starts since the 19th of July when he came off the disabled list with an oblique problem. Only two of them have been bad ones. And in those games, uh, he walked eight. Gave up 11 earned runs. Loves to pitch here, even though he's a fly ball pitcher. Four and two, ERA at 306. Boy, that's pretty respectable for Camden Yards. And then the other thing, calm demeanor. You never really know how it's going. You know, he made a mental adjustment. I think Boston, New York, the two bad games, he said, I was probably trying to throw a little bit hard. I'm going to concentrate on throwing strikes. Came back and pitched a very nice game. A game where he got a no decision, two runs in six innings against the White Sox. So the Orioles needing this to even up this four game set. And we'll hope that their left hander is on. The Yankees have done very well against left handers this year. They are 28 and 20 against left handers. Joe Girardi's team 251 off lefties, 245 off righties. Meanwhile, the Orioles here at home 42 and 32 on the season. And looking to add another in the W column to that here tonight. And the final meeting, as we said, of these two clubs, at least for the regular season, the 987th game that the Orioles and Yankees have played in their history. Here's Brett Gardner. Gardner what proved to be a big run early in the ball game last night when he got a leadoff walk, came around to score on a ground ball as the Yankees got their first run without getting a hit in the first inning. Way and Chen is ready and the delivery to Gardner and that is a swing and a miss and we are underway. So Chen good against lefties. That's his good side. Three of the uh, 13 home runs and Gardner not as quite as good as he is against the right handers. And the pitch will miss. Gardner gets to stay in. One defense in center. Two. He's five for eight with a home run off Chen. That'll work. Yeah. One of the few left handers he's put any kind of numbers up against. Machado will stay in at third base. One one delivery. As you would expect, Girardi has loaded the lineup with the right handers since they hit 271 opposed to 202 for lefties. So you're going to see Gardner top of the order. And of course, Robinson Cano will stay in. But other than that, Girardi's. Put the lefties, put the right handers in the lineup. Two ball, one strike delivery to Gardner, and that ball will be fouled back. Two and two. Yeah, Chen is a fastball pitcher. He's going to throw about 70% of his pitches are going to be fastballs. He has a curveball slider, change up, probably the best secondary pitch. But he's not a finesse left hander by any means. When he's going to have a good game, it's going to be because he's going to be able to use his fastball in and out, up and down. And be very aggressive. There are the numbers you talked about five for eight. That'll be outside, and the count will go full. He threatened to draw his another leadoff walk. Three ball, two strike count. Chan has walked 34 to 115 innings, picking up the 81 strikeouts with the left hander. 3 2. Gardner will pop it back, and as he's been prone to do in this series more than I think I've ever seen him. He has really fought pitches in these at bats and made these at bats long. What's amazing, and you mentioned it a couple of nights ago, when you look at his numbers, uh, he's walked a lot, 52. He's hit more home runs. Ten out of his last 17 hits is for extra base hits. He's a doubles machine, but he has struck out 126 times. 3-2 yeah. delivery to him, and there's another one, and he knew it. Well, this is a gutsy pitch. You want to get off to a good start. You know he he is their base stealer with 24, and then you throw him a really good slider. Jim Wolf doing the home plate umpire, and he tries to kind of deke him by pretending he's going to go to first, but that uh, that arm was up. A Rod receiving the chorus of everything. Four game hit streak coming in, five for 12, two home runs, three RBIs. 
Shift will be on in the infield against him. And the pitch taken for a strike. Rodriguez, couple of hits, eight at bats with a home run, lifetime off Chen. Yeah, and, he, yeah, and Alex has used the whole field. I mean, mm -hmm. two home runs to right, doubles to left center, down the line. That'll go to Roberts at second base. Perfectly positioned for that one. Defense continues to shine for the Orioles last night against Soriano in the ninth inning. It's tough a play as you'll want to make. Bear handed it, made the throw while going down. Just continues to be awe inspiring at third base. There they are, all gold glovers in the outfield. Machado. Got to think he's going to win it. Hardy did win it last year. Ryan Roberts has played well. Chris Davis a chance to win a gold glove. He's been that good. Not to mention the hitting factor. And then Matt Weeders a couple of gold gloves behind the plate. Now two down. Chen looking for a one two three. Soriano will take it outside. Soriano's had a big series. Even though it's only a couple of hits. Been two home runs. Three RBIs. A couple of runs scored. And continues to making a tremendous difference for the Yankees since his acquisition. Since joining the Yankees on Ju July 26, he leads the majors in home runs and RBIs. 15 homers and 47 runs batted in in 44 games. Nobody higher in the majors over that span. And that will be a pie and away 3 and 0. And not happy with that last one, especially as it got away from him. Yeah, well, three pretty much in the same place. And you know, you throw one, and it's all pitching. You, know, you got to have the uh, the natural ability, and then you've got to hone the skills to be able to uh, you know throw your pitches. But it, so much comes down to muscle memory. And when you get it going right, it's pretty easy to do that. And that's what he tried to do in the second pitch, miss, missed on the third, and uh, hopefully now. Can get back into a groove. That's what happened in not only in New York but in Boston. He just lost the muscle memory. Couldn't throw a strike. Three one delivery. Soriano after getting ahead now sees a full count. So three balls and two strikes on Soriano. Chen coming in seven career starts against the Yankees. If you include the post game, post season he's two and three. If not, he's one and three. That's a blast to left field over, and that's going to fall in for a base hit. The cloud. Will get it on a hop. Hit sharply. Nate thought about diving, decided better of it, and with two down, a single. This is the final game of the series, and the Orioles have a chance for the first time in 16 years to win a season series against the Yankees. Batting average in favor of the O's. The runs have been pretty darn close. Home runs, you see 24 21. There have been lots of them. And the ERA actually favoring the Orioles in this season series. Orioles also wrapping up a homestand, and they are four and three on the homestand. Here is Robinson Cano. Cano at three for 16 with a home run lifetime off Chen. The hit by Soriano gets him to the plate in the first inning with somebody on. And the pitch up high for a ball. Cano continues with the enormous numbers against the Orioles in his career, 336 average. 28 home runs, the most he's had against any team. Yeah, if there's any hitter in baseball that can hit any pitch you throw, it's the guy at the plate now. We saw that last night. Hunter used his fourth pitch, a changeup, he hit it over the right center field fence to give him the lead. In New York, curveball off of Feldman, fastball off of Gaussman the other night, to a single up the middle at 97. Well, one of those natural hitters that I mean he has great mechanics because what you'd like to do is get a hitter to carry his hands forward. And one thing that Robinson Cano does is keep his hands back. So it's always in a position, at least the the hands and keep able to keep the bat head back, and that's why you can hit the breaking ball so well. 287 off left handers. That's going to be a base hit into left field. He went the other way. Hardy was moved around a bit towards second base. So Cano is on and with two down the Yankees get back to back singles. And that will set the stage for the first appearance in the series by the veteran Vernon Wells. Yeah they signed Wells because of all the injuries and uh, the Angels uh, 21 million dollars. He paid part of the salary and then he proceeded to hit 300 with six home runs Had a great April. Hit another four home runs in May and then started to slump. 
Granderson came back then got hurt so all of a sudden he didn't get as many at bats. But great start for him. 292 off left handers. Only 213 off right handers so you can see the platoon coming out of those numbers. And Wells getting the start in right field. He has faced Chen before he's had a couple of hits and eight at bats with that double. So a big chance here. The Yankees getting the early opportunity in the ball game. First and second. And two down. The Yankees are eighth overall in the league with runners in scoring position, hitting at 262 on the year. Joe Girardi's ball club somehow has found a way to get things done in scoring runs here in the month of September, second only to the Red Sox in runs scored for the month so far. And we are on day number 12 of this September. 2 0 delivery time and a swing and a miss. Big cut on a pitch down low, 2 and 1. You know, pitching is so much feel, and uh, Wayne still trying to find out how can I throw the ball around the knees. And it doesn't mean they're going to go there. What it does is if you can get the ball down, you usually have to extend, and that allows you to finish your breaking balls. Hasn't been able to throw a change up over, but it's only the first. Soriano can 0 1. 2 1 delivery, and that's a strike on the inside corner. Two balls, two strikes, two down here in the first inning. Game delayed an hour and 18 minutes by rain. Underway here at Camden Yards. The Orioles will be heading to Toronto for a three game set after this ball game. The Yankees go to Boston. Down to third base. Manny Machado on the scoop to go to the bag and record the out. No runs, two hits, no errors, and two are left on base. We'll have a look at the Orioles lineup that will go against Hughes when we come back. By the fans, as you can see between innings. Let's take a look at the Orioles starting lineup. McLeod, Machado, and Davis. Jones, Marquegas, Betterby gets the job as DH. Hardy, Wieners, and Roberts. McLeod, uh, two for six, double and a run in the series. And our scouting report on uh, Philip Hughes. Well, redemption time. Four and 13, 16 game winner last year. Uh, he does, uh, he's just had one of those tough years. They don't score him a lot of runs. Of course, the Yankees. So lately, because of all the injuries, not scoring a lot of runs for anybody. Well, in the park, home run balls have really bothered him. Uh, five of them uh, against the Yankees. Uh, the Orioles have hit against them. And then New York, New York, well, one and nine at home with a 6.13. And then on the road, not a winning record, three and four, but an ERA of under four runs a game, 3.84. He works on uh, full five days rest. And McLeod will take the pitch down low for a ball. Nate leading it off and starting in left field. There are the overall numbers for him. And the two for six that he's had in the series. Hughes delivers and the pitch will miss down low. Chance for Hughes to make a real statement for the Yankees. After going 16 and 13 last year, as ERA has jumped by almost a run a game. 2-0 delivery on the way. And that will be foul back. 
Nate McClouth will try and do otherwise against him as McClouth has got some real good numbers off use with the eight for 12. And that includes four doubles and the eight hits. So he doesn't mind batting against use. That kind of looks forward to it, I would think. <laughs> and then Brian Roberts, two for 16. That's why he's hitting ninth, at least a lifetime. Two one delivery and a towering fly ball that'll stay in the yard. Gardner coming over, but Wells is there, and Wells will put it away. Take a look at the Yankee defense. Uh, you know, Wells, former Gold Glover in right, Gardner in center, Soriano in left. Nunez uh, started uh, early on in this series at shortstop. They go out and get Brendan Ryan from the Mariners. He's at short. Cano, Glow, Glover. Mark Reynolds playing really well at third base over across the diamond at first. And then Chris Stewart, three of the four games here in this four game series, doing the catching for the Yankees. And here is Manny Machado. Three for 12. He's picked up an RBI in this series. He's got the four for eight against Hughes, and he fouls it off. Good article in the latest Sports Illustrated out featuring uh, all the great infield players, especially shortstops, and Manny Machado included because under that ultimate zone rating system they use, Manny Machado is number one in all of baseball. How many runs a player saves or costs his team as a defender? Manny's the best in the game as an infielder with the highest rating for a ball club. Yeah, my eyes tell me that, and I, I like it even better when numbers. You know, we don't get to see everybody play at the field, but I cannot imagine anybody having a better defensive year than he has when it comes to, to range and that zone rating you're talking about. 0 oh, 2 delivery. He will put that one up in the air to left center field. Ball had great hang time on it, and Soriano puts it away. Well, take a look at uh, Phil Hughes. So you can see uh, on the road, that's the dark, very comfortable, 384 at home, 613, Pony's average. Again, on the road, it goes down, Yankee Stadium. As uh, Larry Rothschild, the pitching uh, coach of the Yankees, said, not an easy place if you're a fly ball pitcher, which Philip Hughes is, especially if you're right handed and they load him up with lefties. Very short porch, easy to throw the home run ball. So two down here's Chris Davis and Davis will take it for a strike. Chris with a good series underway here and every night fans with signs hit it here even if they're across the street <laughs> on a Lombard somewhere. Here's the 0 1 delivery and the pitch will be taken inside again against Hughes. He's had one home run. He's four for 19 against him. Well he could hit him on the Lombard Street. I know he could reach Pratt. I mean that's not that far. Not for him. <laughs> one one delivery on the way, and that's into the shift and a base hit. And not a lot of airspace over there to put a ball through when that shift is on, but he found it. The Orioles get their first hit. Well, when I hurt my shoulder, I used to sit in the stands and watch uh, McNally pitch and Brooks Robinson and Aparicio close holes. Blair run them down. If you can hit it hard, it's hard to defend. And, and this guy can hit him about as hard as anybody. So Adam Jones will come up. With a runner on at first base. See if he can get him in. A 1 4 11 in this series against the Yankees. Adams, a career 269 hitter against the Yankees, but this year only 208 against New York pitching with a couple of home runs, but he does have nine RBIs against the Yankees in the 18 games played so far. And Granderson now is out in center field playing instead of Gardner. Granderson was not in the lineup. So came on after Gardner had an at bat. In the first inning and uh, pray tell of the Yankees suffered another injury. We'll uh, try and get word on that with Gardner coming out of the ball game. The face kind of told you that a wow. pretty placid face from Joe Girardi but. Pitch will be taken inside. One ball, one strike count. Orioles, if you missed it earlier today, have lost Aaron O'Day, at least for the moment. He's had a numbness problem in his fingers and some pain in his fingers. Has been undergoing tests for quite uh, a couple of weeks, even, I guess, and they just can't figure out what it is. So he is not going to travel with the team tonight. He had another examination, more testing today. They are hoping. To find out what that is, if it's something simple and they can take care of it, he'll join the club on the road. If it isn't, 
and they're just going to wait until they find out what it is. Yeah, he's been trying to get all kinds of treatment and uh, you know, one one appearance in September. And when you get that, I mean, you can actually pitch games in cold weather, and your fingers will go numb because of the bundle. I mean, you just got to think about how you build your forearm up, both the the flexors and the extensors, to be able to throw and. Outside to Jones refused to bite on that pitch two balls and two strikes to him. and then you do those nerve conduction tests where they test how fast the nerve travels down your arms and there's all kinds of norms but is it your norm. Our good friend Steve Stone said he went through it and he said one of the more painful things mm -hmm. you can go through. So we wish Darren well I mean yeah. it's very well, tough obviously for him and for the Orioles a great loss out of that bullpen. Two ball two strike count Davis off first base Jones off the fist Mark Reynolds will stand there and put it away and that will retire the Orioles no runs one hit no errors one left on base one complete late starting game because of the rain no score. Tonight's game brought to you by Miller Light. Wei and Chen warming up, getting ready to go. And the Orioles defensively will work against Nunez, Reynolds, and Ryan. Coming into today's play, the Yankees with their two victories over the Orioles in the last two or one game out of the wild card, that second spot. Orioles start the day, a game and a half out. And uh, We'll update you on games that are going on tonight. Red Sox with the Tampa Bay game, and Tampa Bay has got the early lead in that one, three to one. Kansas City, Cleveland, all involved in the wild card race in the American League. And the pitch is taken for a strike by Nunez. Yeah, Cleveland up on the White Sox. I think they beat them what ten out of twelve. Some really good numbers against. Nunez over the screen. Nunez getting the start at third base. A Rod, the designated hitter. Rodriguez still a little uh, concerned about the hamstring problem. It came up the other night when he was running the bases and had to play at the plate. 0 2 delivery. That'll be fouled off. Nunez with a couple of hits and seven at bats in this series, playing both short and third. Now you love this count because you don't have to throw him a strike. Good high ball hitter. That's pretty much what he does. About three years ago, most home runs, five, one this year. A little too quick. Nunez yeah. backs out. Nunez hitting only 213 off lefties, 277 off righties. 0 2 count. Chen uh, outside with it, one and two. Yankees six and five this month. The Orioles also six and five in the month of September. The Orioles have got to put a win streak together. Same thing the Yankees are saying. That'll be a base hit into left field. Got it in, but got it up. And Nunez could reach it, and it's a leadoff single. Let's open our Major League Notebook to our East Winds page. The Tampa Bay Rays on August 24. 
They led the American League East nine and a half games. They don't lead it anymore. The Red Sox 14 and three in their last 17. Their magic number to win the East is now eight. Orioles next opponent Toronto Edwin Arcanacion has missed the last three a sprained wrist and not in the lineup again tonight. And the Orioles head there for the first of three in Toronto tomorrow. I think Jose Batista is not playing the rest of the year. Yep, he's done. Yeah. And the pitch to Mark Reynolds taken up high. Former Oriole with a two for eight including a home run and a couple of RBIs in this series. Well, another great high ball hitter. Nunez the pitch to him where you wanted it. Here's the 1 0 delivery and a floater that misses up high. I was looking at the standings. It's so hard. People don't oftentimes believe it, but after the All Star break in the American League, the division leaders were Boston, Detroit, and Oakland. The division leaders today, Boston, Detroit, and Oakland. National League leaders, Atlanta, St. Louis, Arizona. Today, Atlanta, St. Louis, Dodgers. And that ball is going to be out of here. Mark Reynolds, goodbye, home run. A two RBI homer for Reynolds, and the Yankees take a two to nothing lead. All right, you can chalk that up if you, as he hits number 200. He gets exactly what he's looking for, and that's what happens when you get behind hitters. Ends up in the middle of the plate. He's waiting. And just hits a nice little crisp line drive. Uh, the one the other night was about 400 feet. This just zero hang time. Well, the former Oriole really doing some damage here in this four game set. Wei and Chen surrendering his 14th home run, 11 by right handers. And the pitch will be taken by Ryan down low for a ball. The Yankees two runs on four hits now in the ball game. Reynolds with 64 RBIs on the season and with the Yankees. He's really done a job. Reynolds in 22 games hitting over 280. Four home runs with the Yankees and 16 RBIs. And the pitch will be swung on and missed in a 1 2 count on Brendan Ryan. And just imagine the luxury that Joe Girardi's had, uh, the Yankee manager, where he can plug him in. Plug him in as a DH. We've seen him play second base. We've seen him play third base. We've seen him play first base and played them well. All of them. Yeah. Off the plate to the backstop, two and two. Well, superlative uh, when we talk about Reynolds at first base last year for the Orioles, but Chris Davis has done a great job, but certainly misses bat when it talks about Reynolds. Down to third, that'll be foul. Yeah, Mick Eleanor is wondering where it is. It's right behind him. Well, for for Wei and Chen, he's got to somehow be able to establish that changeup. And again, came in on the fist. That one's going to be fouled back by Ryan. The Chen with a long ball and the Yankees as we showed you these two teams have pumped home runs. The Yankees on the year have had uh, in this series 22 home runs and the Orioles have had 24. 2 2 pitch and again in and again. Just fights that off to hold the count. A pretty good pitch. Uh, Brendan Ryan doesn't have the real quick bat. The hits he has gotten against the Orioles, and not a whole lot of them, and usually out over the plate, in right field up the middle. 2 2 delivery on the way, and that will miss. Ryan making his debut yesterday, arriving uh, just the day before in a deal. Once they found out Jeter was going to be out for the year, came over from Seattle. Player to be named later in the trade for Brendan Ryan, and Derek Jeter will be a fan. For the Yankees and a cheerleader the rest of the way, and their captain. He got him one away. So 40 pitches now to get five outs and gets him to chase. I like the line. Uh, Derek Jeter is undefeated as a cheerleader. 
because when he doesn't play he does cheer. Yes he does. Yeah. I remember Terry Crowley used to say that about Pete Rose he said you would never ever know. You would think it maybe it's the ninth inning of the World Series and you're down, down three games to two. That's the way he cheered for his teammates. And Jeter's that type of guy. Here is Chris Stewart, their catcher. Stewart's had a one for five in the series. Chen's pitch to him will be popped up, and that'll be out of play. Yankees have had one catcher go down in this series as Austin Romine did have a slight concussion first game of this series on a foul tip on Tuesday and had to come out of the ball game certainly hope he's able to overcome that quickly so Stewart getting the starts and a swing and a miss on that one and no chance on that well there's the first change up and it was a good one throw so many fastballs change ups imperative just even if you're slow, I mean, just think about it. You're Chris Stewart. You're late on the fastball. What are you going to do? Try to speed up the bat. Change up. Makes a good pitch. Well out in front because he's trying to get a little quicker and you get the strikeout. So here's Curtis Granderson getting his first at bat. Came on for Gardner. Gardner struck out in the first inning, and we understand it's a left oblique. And watch this on the swing, a left oblique problem. And there you see him grabbing it. And then had to come out of the game. So Granderson in and center field puts a left hander in for a left hander. Gary, what the other night you said that Jim Presley or Real hitting instructor, how many 19,000 swings maybe over the course of a year? Closer to 20,000. Yeah. And that's what happens when you try to put the brakes on. There's a good slider. He got him. He strikes the side out. But Nunez singled and Reynolds homered. And the Yankees have a 2 nothing lead. And what Greg, you've already won 500 for being selected and 100 more for every Orioles hit during the game and an extra 500 for any Orioles home run in the fifth inning for the latest info on new games current promotions and second chance contests visit mdlottery.com today. Orioles bad bottom of the second inning off use. Vartegas Benavit and Hardy will be coming up to some of the members new members of the Navy an enlistment. Took place before the ball game, enlistment ceremony with a number of new members. Clearly, there's a veteran. <laughs> Let's take a look at those ribbons. And here's Marikakis, and the pitch will be taken for a strike. Nick has had very good numbers against Hughes, 326 lifetime. A couple of home runs off the Yankees starter. Granderson shallow in center. Right where he needed to be. He'll come in and easily get underneath it. And makes the catch. Bill Marcakis first out here in the second inning. Yeah, all four outs in the air. That's because Hughes comes in with the third lowest ground ball percentage. So 
turn that around the other way. Third highest fly ball. Yeah, nine Sunday. innings against the Orioles in two starts this year. No decision, and then the loss up in New York. Three home runs in that game. Two here in Baltimore. Actually, pitched well. Two runs. Both of them scored on the home runs. So you can see Olson Betamit, a horrific knee injury, so not a lot of at bats. Betamit will take the pitch for a strike. He is five for ten with a home run against you. So that gets him the DH job. He has not had a hit in his last nine at bats. And a swing and a miss on a foul tip, says Jim Wolf, our home plate umpire into the middle and two. Phillip used four pitches. Curveball slider, change up, fastball, last start. Only threw three. Loves the slider. Boy, how did he not get that pitch? Well, you could see Chris Stewart. Yeah, he was he was ready to throw it down to third. Watch the catcher. I think he just his missed head it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that pitch will be taken inside. So Betamy gets a two ball two strike count from Hughes. First game against the Orioles in April. He took a loss. Five runs nine hits three innings. Second start non decision two runs five hits six innings. Lifetime against the Orioles six and five. And Betamy there's that pitch down and in. Got him that time. Yeah there's the slider. So about a nine mile per hour difference. I mean look at the late finish on it. Throws it just inside the glove. We got a guy that's not a, not a lot of at bats, and he's a much better fastball hitter, so they pitch him perfectly. That'll bring up the Orioles shortstop. J.J. Hardy brings a four game hit streak in, continued in this series with the four for 11 RBI and a couple of runs scored for Hardy. And that'll be outside doing four a ball. Orioles here in this homestand, four and three record. They've averaged 3.7 runs a game. Basically, on the year, they've needed four to get wins. Good ERA for the team, 3.09. And that one punched to right field. And that will be played by Wells. And Hughes has a 1 2 3 inning. The Yankees, after two, have the lead. Which he struck out. Now watch this and watch how many pitches. Here's the first one. That is a ball. Here's the second pitch. Strike one and one. Third pitch. Strike two. He went back to the dugout and ended his at bat. Well, he had a different strike strike zone than, than Jim Wolf did. See, he thought the first changeup was a strike. So but it wasn't. Oh, well, he didn't know that. I know, but neither did anybody else. I really think he struck out on two strikes. Well, he thought he struck out on three because well, he thought he, he thought the first pitch probably should have been called. It yeah, wasn't. But the point is he didn't strike out. Well, he and he left. Well, then then you're out. Well, you are because you left the batter's box in the field. But that's what it looked like to us because uh, that first pitch was not a called strike. Interesting. A Rod 
Well, I suppose when you have games delayed by rain, you got to kind of get up some ground. So we just have two strikes for a strikeout instead of three. <laughs> and uh, an 0 1 count. Nobody argued. Nobody came out to say anything. But you saw he did not call the first pitch a strike, and there were only three pitches thrown. Rodriguez lined out his first time up, and the pitch will be taken up high. A Rod, the much discussed issues, which, look, he's got every right to play under the rules. He's playing by the rules. But what if the things that he is charged with end up in a suspension and the Yankees are able to get into the postseason and he contributes and he is. Well I'll tell you where I'm coming from. I think that Bud Selig tried to make him the poster boy for PEDs and the the penalty is too severe and if he had given him what the union would have agreed to and Michael Weiner said that he'd be suspended and he wouldn't be playing. Yep. So you can't undo all the stuff that's happened and blame one guy. No. I'm not saying he doesn't have some blame. And that's what this is all about. Yep. If they had said Alex the rest of the year, he would have said, thank you very much, and I'm gone, just like Ryan Bryan and the rest of them. But, they, you know, a whole year is just so much more severe than anybody else. And I, I, you can look at it other way, but it would have been over. We wouldn't be talking about it. He would be suspended. He wouldn't be beating the Yankees, and he wouldn't be irritating a lot of guys. Yep. That's all. And it's just a simple the way I look at it, as simple as it can be. Well, he's certainly making a difference. His presence in this lineup has mattered more, I think, than anybody would have thought because it was pretty clear at the time when the proposed settlement was offered by the union that the Yankees weren't anxious to have him back. Probably they would have been the happiest people on earth if A-Rod had been suspended. They aren't anymore. I don't think they ever expected him to have the impact on the ball club that he's having. Pitch will be taken up high. So he plays, legally so, and uh, is making a difference. Three ball, two strike count. This will be the eighth pitch of this at bat to Rodriguez. Well, I think you have to add another thing you can add is that he may not have taken the suspension, even if the union thought it was the right one. I mean, that was his decision to make. And yep. I mean, that's part of the grievance agreement that you. Uh, and the only reason that the commissioner, I think, felt that he could suspend him longer than either 50 or 100 games is because he didn't test positive. In fact, none of them did. And they are saying, at least, he hindered the investigation. Yeah. Pitches outside, so Rodriguez will draw the leadoff walk here in the third inning. Help the Orioles Sinai Hospital to Care First support a great cause. Save the American Art Association's exclusive 50% ticket offer, which includes the upcoming Blue Jays series the end of September. You can go to Orioles.com slash AHA. You get reduced tickets, 50% off. All you got to do is donate $10 to the American Art Association for each ticket purchased. Half price. It goes to charity. Great cause. Orioles.com slash AHA. And here is Soriano, and the pitch is there for his strike. Can't beat that. Get to see Oriole baseball. Get to come to Camden Yards. Make a difference in the community. That's a bonus. 50% off tickets. Rodriguez on with the first walk surrendered by Chen. Second leadoff man on in three innings for the Yankees. And a big uppercut by Soriano at a single his first time up. 2 nothing lead for the Yankees. We're in the third inning. Yankees with a chance perhaps to pick up ground tonight in the wild card race. Chen is working a little too fast for the Yankee hitters. So they've uh, asked for timeout a couple of times already in the ball game. 0 oh, 2. And punch the other way. That could be trouble. Marquegas coming over, and it's a fair ball. Down in the wet part of the corner, it'll be a double as he gets it back in. A Rod, who can hardly run, will jog over to third base, and Soriano's two for two with a double and a single. Yeah, he just tries to protect the outside corner, but the ball's up. Having trouble getting it down. Just up enough, and he just flicks it out there. Really good low ball hitter. A little bit luck here. Mine's there's your wet spot. So here's a big moment in the ball game early. Two on the double by Soriano. Rodriguez at third. And Cano coming up. 
Cano hitting 341 with runners in scoring position. He and Gardner are the two leaders on the Yankees in that department. Cano has already had a single in the ball game, four for 13 in the series, and he's got three RBIs in the first three games. And he will take the pitch for a strike. Well, what's happening, and sometimes you can't control it, is that Philip Hughes hasn't won a game since July 2nd. And the more runs he gets, the more comfortable he'll feel. And right here, because of the situation early in the game, infield back, you'll concede one run not to give up two. And then you have one of the best bats in baseball. Oh, one count on Cano. And he too is going to try and slow Chen down here. This is all about trying to get to Chen mentally. They do not want him getting the ball back and throwing it. They want him to think out there. Maybe overthink. And they continue to step out against him. Here's the 0 1 delivery. Cano reaching, fouls it back. And then he'll do his little stroll. Comes all the way, front of home plate, back around. Both of the gloves. Digs in. Digs out. There we go. Little pine tar. Kick the spikes. It's a long time. It's another rain delay. It is. Two on, nobody out. Cano the 0 2. And that's going to be outside. Weeders, yeah. that's where he'd set up. He blocks it. Yeah, I remember. Um, uh, the, the late Chuck Thompson Hall of Fame broadcaster doing Steve Stone pitching against Mike Hargrove. He had even more mannerisms. And he's going through it all. It's, it's on a radio broadcast. And then he goes, Stone did exactly what he should have walked off the back of the mound. <laughs> the minute Hargrove got ready to hit. <laughs> that's the cat and mouse game <laughs> yep. that gets played sometimes. Here's the one two delivery, and that's going to be away. So the count goes to two balls and two strikes on Cano. Now you really like to count 0 and 2, but now because you haven't been able to execute either of the sliders, it's getting a little bit more where you don't have a lot of room off the plate to work with. Cano coming in with the fifth best average in the league, also starting the day fifth in RBIs. He got his 100th RBI last night. 2 2 delivery, thought about it. It's even further outside. He takes the walk I've never seen before between the catcher and the umpire. That was a good one. And a three ball two strike count. So Chen after getting ahead of him two strikes. Takes the count full. And the pitchers are piling up 63. Well the Orioles have a lot of options in the bullpen. You got you know, Josh Stinson a starter. You got Steve Johnson a starter. Neither of them up. 3 2 delivery and walked him on four out of the strike zone. They are loaded. Two walks in the inning. Now you cannot let the Yankees run away with this. Inning. I mean, obviously, they have a chance to have a big inning here, but you can't not just sit there and think that Wei and Chen is going to be Wei and Chen because two of the last three games he's pitched exactly the way he's pitching now, and it's just that he's been wild. And usually, He's never wild. Well, we've got two pitchers in the game who have had uh, two of the worst post All Star differentials from what they started out with in the league. Philip Hughes had a 4 5 7 before the All Star, 6 6 9 after. Wei and Chen had a 2 8 2 ERA before the All Star break. It jumped to 4.72. There's the list of those who had good pre All Star starts. And those who have struggled post All Star game. Albeit two of them are the, the Boston and the Yankee starts where he gave up 11 runs in about seven innings. But those are only two starts ago. And so he's been struggling. No doubt about it. So the bases are loaded Rodriguez, Soriano, and Cano. And here is Wells. Nobody out. Infield double play depth. Ground ball to the hole. That's going to be a base hit. Rodriguez will score. Soriano's coming. Here's the throw by McClouth and not in time. A two RBI base hit by Wells and the Yankees have a 4 nothing lead. Well, Vernon Wells, veteran hitter. As you mentioned, close to 300 against lefties. Real aggressive. Actually goes down and hits a pretty good pitch, but he pulls it. 
So he has to be looking for it. And hits it hard enough to get it by Hardy. And then uh, Soriano, you know, it's pretty wet out here. He knows the scouting reports. And the cloth runs him down, doesn't have a good arm. 47 RBIs for Wells. It'll be Steve Johnson up in the bullpen for the Orioles. No outs here in the third inning. Two runs in. Cano stopped at second base. And here's Nunez. And he'll take the pitch up high for a ball. So the Yankee bats who have been at it throughout this month are at it again. Four runs on six hits. And then Eduardo Nunez. He had a base hit his first time up. He scored ahead of Mark Reynolds on the home run. I don't know. Oh, two pitch. Got that one in the air to left field. Runners will play it halfway. McLeod will put it away. And Nunez is the first out in the third inning. Tex Masson's word of the day memorial to 29292 for your chance to win a lunch with Adam Jones, presented by Jiffy Lube. Change more than your oil. Help change a life. Drive into Jiffy Lube and support the Muscular Dystrophy Association. Tampa Bay's 3 2 lead over Boston there in the sixth inning of their game. We'll have finals on these other games because of the Orioles' hour 18 minute rain delay. Cleveland 6 1 over the White Sox there in the third. Here is Mike Reynolds who had the home run. Reynolds will go after the first pitch, pop it up, and that'll be out of play. So Mike against the Orioles. Picking up RBIs and some pretty good averages. He's had two home runs against the Orioles this year and uh, five runs batted in against the O's. Cano at second, Wells on at first. Chen with the 0 1. Two strike count. Chen here at Camden Yards this year has gone four and two with that 306 ERA, but the Yankees have already got four off him in this ball game. Here's the 0-2 delivery and Reynolds and the pitch that is tying him up inside is down. Yeah, down in the zone. Set it all up with a great changeup pitch before that, and then once they think you have more than one pitch you can get over, it becomes a little less difficult to pitch. And that will bring up Brendan Ryan. Ryan with runners on at first and second still. 87 games with the Mariners. Almost all of them at short. He hit 192. Three home runs, 21 RBIs. Pitches there to the high strike called against Ryan. Here's the 0 1 delivery. Down to third. Machado short hops. Gets the out. As Manny Machado pulls off another outstanding defensive play. Denies a hit, saves a run. Force out on Cano at third base. Yankees, though, will get a couple in. They do it on two hits and they leave. Two on. Yankees up 4 0.
Peninsula of Orioles Spring Training is a great destination for culinary adventure. From the fresh local seafood to an array of Sagat rated restaurants, you can learn more by going to SaverSarasota.com. And a great time to go for baseball fans. The Instructional League starting September 16th through October 8th. Games are free and open to the public at Ed Smith Stadium, the spring home of the O's. Then you can go to the beach. That's right. Summer in uh, Florida, one of the great well-kept secrets for yes. some. Yeah, quiet. Not much traffic. No. Nice weather. Fish are still biting. Here's Matt Wieters. And then you get to see some of the young phenoms. Trying to impress. So there are real efforts. Weeders fouls it back. Weeders Roberts and McLeod do up here. Matt brings a 194 career average against Hughes into the ball game. He's had uh, one lifetime home run against him. 27 year old right hander. That's going to go to the gap. Right through the middle. Cut off by Wells. Going to try for just one as. Nice play by Wells to get over there, and Weeder stays at first base with a long single. Now well, he's a former uh, Gold Glover, and Matt says thank you very much. I'm going to get a little hanging slider. Comes right back into the middle of the plate, and he hits it out to right center. It looks like off the bat it's going to be a double, but Wells does scurry over. So the Orioles get the leadoff man on for the first time. Hughes has struggled with that. He's retired only 59% of leadoff batters. Low number. You want to be up around 70. Here's Brian Roberts. Roberts, two for 16 off Hughes. And they give him the hole because they play Matt Wieters. They'll hold him on the bag. Mark Reynolds, uh, he'll come off a couple of steps because you'd love to be able to. I mean, we saw Brian do this two nights ago. In fact, he's swinging the bat extremely well. Great at bat. Off of uh, Rivera last night with two outs in the ninth inning as the Orioles try to come back and catch the Yankees after trailing five to three. Brian hitting 238 in September with a couple of home runs and an 0 2 count on him. Weeders close to the bag at first. And the 0 2 delivery, and that'll be up high. Brian will take that one. Brian batting ninth in the order. Nate McLeod waiting on deck. Runner on, nobody out. Four runs, six hits for the Yankees. No runs, two hits for the Orioles. Davis and Weeders have had the singles. One, two. Mm. That's a movement on that pitch. Roberts is retired. Hughes gets a second K. Now yeah, late uh, break in uh, slider ends up in the middle of the plate but the break I think it's off the plate and then comes back in and Ryan trying to wait as long as he can and just couldn't quite get it. That'll bring up Nate McLeod fly ball to right field his first time up. Nate with a couple of hits now seven at bats in the series. Infield moves or uh, outfield rather moves around towards left and in. Well, Soriano in left and Granderson in center in a couple of steps. Wells stays deep and right. Yeah, and Abet just missed a home run the first time. I mean, he hit it pretty deep right center field. And Got that one to right. Wells coming. It'll stay up for him. Readers will get back to first base. Two down. Yeah, pretty nice defense behind Philip Hughes tonight when you know Gardner out, but Granderson a normal center fielder, and then you got a gold glove out in right field. So there are two down, and Manny Machado who fly it out to left field his first time up will stand in. Manny came in hitting 253 against the Yankees on the year with a home run and six RBIs against New York. Final game, regular season. These two teams will play against one another. Two down, Weeders at first. The Yankees have made ground by winning games against the Eastern Division opponents, these so called two for one games. The Yankees at 35 and 31 against the East, the Orioles. 
28 and 31. I and mean, Muse is trying to do something he hadn't done all year, which is to beat the American League East. Mm. 0 and 3. Be something for them. Chevrolet League leaderboard brought to you by Chevrolet. Find new roads. Multi hit game leaders, American League. Osmer with Kansas City. The Royals very much, very much in the postseason mix. And you got Manny Machado with 52, only three behind. Machado will take it outside. One and two. Yeah, Eric Hosmer, I think, um, must have paid attention to George Brett when he was the interim hitting instructor for about six weeks. One ball, two strikeout. Leaders chatting with his former teammate Mark Reynolds as he gets the lead over there. Use one and two, two away. All the way to the backstop on this one, and leaders will jog down. Now look like a little change up or slider, but anything, whatever, he bounces it. And Stewart can't block it or doesn't block it. You know it's going to be a wild pitch if it hits the ground. Five wild pitches on the season for Hughes. Well, those, yeah, yeah Orioles those. Orioles get a runner to second. Yeah, that little uh, glimpse of light. Get a base hit here, get back in the game with a run, two outs. First runner to second for the Orioles. 2 2 delivery by Hughes. Machado got jammed and fouls it back over the screen. Yeah, Phelps done a nice job tonight. He got Jonesy, jammed him. Able to uh, pitch him. Orioles 8 for 20 with runners in scoring position in this series. They've moved back up to fourth in the league in the year, hitting at 268. Two ball, two strike count, two down. And that's going to get a run in. Mandy Machado slices it. Wells up to hold him to a single. But the Orioles are on the board. RBI. Leaders crosses and it's 4-1. to one. Yeah, pretty frustrating uh, for the Yankees. Exhilarating for the O's. The wild pitch. Joe Girardi, former catcher, said, boy, that ball should have been blocked. It isn't. Nice little at bat right here. Fastball in the middle of the plate. Leaders uh, not a lot of speed, but easily scores on the ball down into the corner. Chato gets his 70th RBI of the season. And the Orioles get on the board on their third hit. All singles, two in the inning. The wild pitch mattered, at least to this point. Here's Chris Davis. Davis, a single is first time up. Chris. Looking for the long ball on that swing still leads everybody with the 49 homers six ahead of Cabrera in the American League. In the air left field. And it'll be over in foul territory and no no play. Take a look at our crush log start date 9 12 for Chris Davis chasing Roger Maris for the all time American League single season home run mark. 49 right now. Maris had 56 at this point in 1961. So Chris right now is on pace for 55 to be a new Orioles record. And uh, of course, Maris ended up with 61 in 61. 0 2 delivery. And that'll be inside. David Huff, who had been a scheduled starter until last night, is now up in the bullpen. Chris Davis only a couple of home runs this month so far. One two delivery to him and Chris will take it. Runner's going to move up again. Another wild pitch. Thank you very much. This time uh, Chris Stewart couldn't do anything about it. Yeah, it just bounces a curveball about 58 feet. Well, maybe actually 60 doesn't quite get to the front edge of the plate and then picks away. And down to second base. Cano now taking over the job Jarek Jeter used to have, kind of acting as the field captain out there when he thinks need, things need to be talked about or changed. 
comes in to have a word. The Jeter over there on the bench. Davis with a two ball two strike count two down another chance for an RBI. And Chris will follow back. Yeah that ball a little lower and it might have been four to three. And we'd have to kind of watch what Buck Showalter does when they go to the handshake. <laughs> it's going to be interesting the next one. It's not only be the home run number 50. I don't think he dares to pull his hand away. He talked about that clip we showed you earlier. I just think a knuckle thing you know. Well, yeah, yeah they're so gentle. Yeah. yeah. Two ball two strike count again. Machado off second. Davis oh. will take it. Oh. Oh. Smith Hughes thought he had him. Three and two. Well he certainly wanted that pitch and there's been a couple. Orioles one in, one on in the inning, two down. Three ball, two strike delivery to Davis. Home runs for Chris this season. He got nine in April, good start. May he had 10. In June, he picked up 12. That's his high month. Seven in July, nine in August, and now two here in September, which at this pace obviously would be his low month. Four home runs, but he does hit him in bunches. Yep. I mean, obviously, guys are. If you get to 49, they get the tendency to be a little bit more careful. 3-2 delivery on the way and uh, spiked off the handle that time. But invariably, and I mean, this is the key down the stretch, not only for Chris but for the Orioles, is that you have protection. That's you know, Adam Jones hitting behind you, but people have to get on like. Right here, I mean, you, you do have a first base open, but you're ahead four to one, so you're not trying to put anybody on. But if they can protect him and where they have to pitch to him, they get a lot better pitches down the stretch to hit. Otherwise, why would you throw him a lot of strikes? Orioles, they have scored four runs or less now in eight of their last nine games, and they have scored just 60 runs in their last 16. 3 2 delivery, and that one will be fouled back. Well, the Orioles need to pick up the offensive pace here the rest of the way, a little bit at least. The four runs generally has been enough for them to win. The starting pitching, of course, has been outstanding over the last three weeks for the most part, but now the bullpen's in trouble with the injuries. Now, the attrition and overuse. Of yeah, pitching all those innings, yeah. Three and two. Davis battling here against Hughes. And Chris on the off speed pitch swings and misses. Play is going to have to be made. Stewart gets it there, and that will retire the side. Orioles will pick up one run on two hits, no errors. The base runner will be left on. It is now a 4 1 Yankee lead. For Wei and Chen coming into the ballgame with 81 strikeouts. He would start out early in the game. 
getting the leadoff batter on a strikeout, then go to the second inning after giving up a home run with strikeout the side. Five strikeouts so far in the ball game. Four six and zero oh for the Yankees. One three and zero oh for the Orioles as we go to the fourth inning. Game delayed an hour and eighteen minutes by rain. Since it's been dry, and hoping it'll stay that way. Yeah, and Wayne Chen just has to uh, get back to a little more where he was at least late in last inning, which is to use all his pitches, get ahead, throw strikes, and establish something other than the fastball. Because it's been in the middle of the plate a little bit too much tonight. There's the off speed delivery, and that is going to be a called strike. Here is Chris Stewart, a strikeout victim in the second inning. Probably on two strikes, but nobody argued. He went back, sat down. And the pitch is taken outside. One ball, one strike count. Way and Chen trying to settle down here. He needs a couple of efficient innings with that pitch count up to 74. And we're in the fourth. 1-1 one, one delivery. That'll go to short. Hardy on the one hopper. Fan Appreciation Week begins on Tuesday, September 24. The Orioles begin the final homestand of the regular season against the Blue Jays and the Red Sox. The week will be capped off on Sunday, September 29. First 25,000 fans, 15 and over, get the Chris Davis AT&T Fans Choice bobblehead. So buckle back up, get your tickets, cheer the O's on 888-848-BIRD or Orioles.com. And what a finish it should be. The pitch on the inside corner for a strike. Granderson came on for Gardner. He left with a first at bat, having struck out. A left ob oblique problem took him out. Granderson on the big cut. 0 and 2. Granderson also struck out in his first at bat. Yeah, that was the best sequence of breaking balls that Wayan had all night. And he just dropped a couple of sliders. Curtis swung through him. Went back to the bench. Granderson a 1 2. And that'll be fouled away. Granderson 242 off the Orioles this year. A couple of home runs. A couple of RBIs. The Yankees with a 4 to 1 lead. Wells a 2 RBI single. Reynolds the 2 RBI homer. And the Orioles got back a run in the third on the single by Machado. One ball, two strike count. Towering pop up. Everybody can get under this. Jones will come in and put it away. There's the second out of the inning with nobody on. Time for our AT&T Mobility Trivia Fact. Innings one through three, the Orioles run differential, plus 71, third best in the majors. Innings four through six, a minus 54, 28th out of 30 teams. From the seventh inning on, a plus 26. So they've been hurt in the middle. Yeah, and that's usually... Uh... Well, a couple of things. That's when your starters struggle, and we talked about the, all the innings for the bullpen this year. And, and it's also for most ball clubs, if you're going to get to somebody, if you can knock a starter out, those are the innings where you probably have your least experienced, maybe your least talented pitchers. I mean, that's the soft underbelly of bullpens. You know, right before you get to, I mean, the good teams have six, seven, eight, nine. And this, that's why the Orioles were so good last year. I mean, you you hardly scored against them, but fourth and fifth in that area maybe get some guys that don't have experience in the big leagues for the first year starters in the minors long men at this level oh two count on Rodriguez and the pitch will be in the dirt Rodriguez walked scored in the third lined out in the first Rodriguez now fifth on the all time baseball home run list 653 Willie Mays is fourth seven more at 660. Chen with a one ball two strike count two down nobody on. And a swing and a miss and there is the first one two three inning 
for Wei and Chen. That is strikeout number six in the ball game. Jones will be leading it off for the Orioles when we come back. Seasons having concluded, looking at some of the leaders. Caleb Joseph at Bowie and hits. Jason Pretty, Nor uh, Norfolk, Buck Britton, also at Norfolk. Garabas Rosa, 127. Minor league ballparks. And a uh, couple real close, of course. Yeah, yeah. Aberdeen and Brother yeah. Orioles are on the road. I mean, even Norfolk. Only 239 miles. I'm going to. I'm trying to find Dubuque, Iowa tomorrow. Field of Dreams. Dubuque, Iowa. Yeah. Is that on your GPA? Hopefully. That'll go to third oh, base yeah. and caught right in the middle on that one. Was Nunez and Jones is on to lead off the fourth. That's what you need. Wild pitches, clutch base hits. That's what Machado got the misplay right here. Well, that's why when I pitched, I had Brooks Robinson. The Orioles pitchers now. They get uh, they get Manny Machado. So Girardi's on his way out. Philip Hughes getting the start. Looks like he's only going to go right to here. Hughes is going to come out of the ball game, and they'll. Bring on the proposed starter, Huff, who is going to be making the start until the conclusion in the ball game last night. Yankees have a four to one lead.
game last night. Short time in this one, three innings plus. Yeah, he'll leave. I mean, obviously, he doesn't have a chance to lose it. Uh, David Huff, as you mentioned, was supposed to start. He did get a start against the Red Sox, gave up nine runs and three and a third innings, eight hits, a couple of home runs. He's got it all done. I mean, almost covered every. Didn't walk anybody, though, because he's always been a control guy. They claimed him off of waivers. The Orioles have seen him as a starter in years past when he pitched for the Indians. So those, uh, and he's actually, at least for the Yankees, done a pretty good job out of the bullpen. So uh, the last one, and that was against Chicago, pitched five and two thirds innings. So I don't think they'll go that long. But um, again, a finesse guy, real good changeup, got a little bit of a cutter, curveball, and the changeup he usually uses to right-handed hitters. He's worked primarily out of the bullpen since coming to the Yankees. Only one start, and this is his eighth appearance. 15 hits and 19 innings with those 13 strikeouts. So Huff, the left hander on, with a runner on at first base, Jones reaching on the error charge to Nunez. And Nick Marcakis, who flied out to center field, will come to the plate with nobody out. Marcakis 0 for 4 off Huff. Actually, part of a consideration that Girardi had in this game when he moved Hughes to pitch was that the Orioles would then have a lineup in against a right hander. And if he had to go early in the game to long relief such as this, the lineup would be better suited, as far as Huff was concerned, a left hander be pitching against it. And it's so early in the game for Buck Showalter, he can't start substituting players. So we'll see. Yeah, in the back, he had been to, uh, back end of uh, Joe's uh, bullpen because Boone Logan has the bad elbow, was pretty much right handed dominant. So you don't want to be switching to Valencia, who's as hot as anybody, and now Michael Morrison, and all of a sudden get the matchups that the other manager wants later in the ballgame. Interesting that what you're, what you're seeing the Yankees do here is trying to piecemeal the game together with starting pitching. By working things three innings, if he can get three innings here and then go probably with three more pitchers to complete the game, would kind of be the game plan. Put up in the air as center field, Anderson is over. Runner tagging Jones, going to take off for second. He'll come back on a strong throw into second base. So Nick Marikakis retired, went away here. In the fourth inning will be a change here. Danny Valencia is going to come on to pinch hit and here's why those numbers over the last 10 hottest hitter in the lineup both with the long ball and base hits. So with the left hander coming on here comes Valencia. Yeah four for four off of Pettit last night so. It's a nice little run. Well I mean, he's been red hot. He got him originally because his. Lifetime numbers batting average off of lefties were well over 300 lifetime righties was a little bit of a struggle as you see but he early on he did more home runs against right handed pitchers than lefties. And Valencia on the off speed delivery. He has faced tough seven times three for seven. Against the left hander of the Yankees. Well for David Huff that pitch right there the changeup. And throws it about uh, when he does throw it about 72 percent of the time to right handers. Try to get him out of the front foot. Oh, one fastball that's going to miss inside. Orioles down four to one. One ball, one strike count, one out. Here in the bottom half of the fourth inning, Betamit just had one at bat as the DH, so Valencia takes over that role for the moment. Jones at first, reaching on the air. And Huff's pitch will come inside again, and a two ball, one strike count. Let's see if Danny Valencia looks change up here. With only one strike, you have that luxury. That's what Huff loves to throw. Right handers 294 off Huff. Left handers 212. Here's the 2 1 delivery. And up high with that, 3 and 1. And there was a change up, but not even close. So they have 11 man bullpen now down to 10 minus moving loaded nine available arms. Behind Huff. And a lot of managing going on trying to figure out matchups not just for now but later in the game. Three ball one strike delivery on the way Valencia he's going to stay hot. Oh great diving catch made Soriano and John 
Jones back to first. A sinking line drive and a big out. Well, that's the kind of bats you're getting from uh, Danny Valencia. Quality of bats. Hits it right on the uh, nose. Nice running play. Wet outfield. So a second out recorded here in the fourth inning. And that will bring up Hardy. Hardy two for eight with a home run. Lifetime off Huff. Jones still at first base. Two down. And a strike taken. Boston's come back to tie Tampa 3-3. Three, three. They're in the seventh inning of their ball game. And the pitch is a strike on the outside corner. We were talking about our teams have not changed positions. Only Arizona, which was in first at the All Star break with the Dodgers moving ahead of them since. The wild card teams are the same as well. They haven't changed. That ball will go to short, and Cano will come to second base to get the force out on. The runner Jones, Hardy in the fielder's choice will end the inning. No runs, no hits, one arrow, one left on. Yankees lead it four to one. News and notes here the Kansas City Royals what a surprising run 27 seasons without a playoff appearance they're just two games out of the wild card chase Cleveland they open the series tonight against the White Sox they've won 11 of their last 13 against the White Sox they have a 7 2 lead in that ball game tonight Cleveland does and the game completed this afternoon Oakland continues to win they defeated Minnesota 8 to 2 Griffin got the win giving up only a run in seven innings. Redick who has been red hot with a long ball another home run and three RBIs. Oakland ahead of Texas by three games starting the day picking up the win. That's for the American League West lead. Way and Chen's delivery grounded to third base Machado's got it on Soriano's ground ball one away. Yeah, the Orioles uh, went into Kansas City right after the All Star break. They started with Texas, won three in a row, beat Kansas City that uh, Monday night, and then the bullpen took over the next three nights. Bruce Chen, Guthrie won one of those games. Bullpen, you found out how good a team they were, and they were very close games. And all of a sudden, what did Ed uh, Yo say? We have to win series, and that's what they've been doing the whole second half. Kansas City off. They're not playing tonight. Cardinals are trailing in the fourth inning against Milwaukee, so it's a chance for the Pirates to gain a game in the Cardinals. And if they do, they'll be tied again for first place in the National League Central. If the Cardinals lose, Pirates have won. Cano has singled and drawn a walk in the ball game, and Cano will take the pitch and a one-ball, one-strike count on Cano. 
Great finishes. Our teams are down to their final somewhere between what 17 and 19 games. Lots of scoreboard watching and lots of outstanding baseball to be played. I think for the Orioles, teams they need to beat are on their schedule. And the Yankees here in this four game set really need a win tonight, need to go to Toronto. And at least win the series, if not try and sweep the Jays who have struggled. And then you're back. You got Tampa Bay and you got the Red Sox. Uh -huh. and, and you just have to keep winning, and that's not always easy when you're under 500 against American League East teams, something you did so well last year. And then, of course, the team you're playing, they're saying the same thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> One, two delivery, and Hardy's got it. It was stung, but it's the second out of the inning. Well, the special caps featuring an American flag patch worn in last night's game by the Orioles players and coaches are now available at auction. It's at Orioles.com slash auction. Each cap autographed with a player or coach who wore it, authenticated by MLB. Proceeds from the auction benefit Signal 13 Foundation. Their support work for the Baltimore Police Department personnel. Visit Orioles.com slash auction to make your bids. First ball hitting Wells, who's had a big hit. Two RBI single in the third inning with the bases loaded. As the Yankees got two runs on two hits in the third, two runs on two hits, a Reynolds home run in the second. Oh, one count on Wells. And a ground ball to second base. Roberts moved that way. He'll get the out. And Chen retires him in order. That's two clean innings in a row and nine in a row that he's set down. Now, since we have the rain delay, we ought to have at least two pretzels. Two, please. Two. Yankee lead, but he's hoping for now after setting down nine in a row is a little offensive help, Jim. They don't score a lot of runs for him, but they better tonight. And uh, you talked about it, what, last 16 games, 60 runs for the Orioles. So somebody's got to get hot, and more they're going to have to do what Earl Weaver used to love. And Buck Walder will embrace it tonight. That's a three run home run because that'll really get you to either the lead or back into this game. But what Wayne has done, you know. He'd like to say you'll never ever struggle. Well, he did. He gave up two runs in two innings early on and slammed the door. And you just hope they do come back. And this club's certainly capable, but they're going to have to do it if it gets a little bit longer at the, at the back end of a real good bullpen. Well, we said the Orioles got them right where they want them because if they get the lead, they don't hang on to it. So that, <laughs> that's right. That ball put high in the air, center field off the bat of Weeders, but it'll be hauled in by Granderson and Weeders. Becomes the first out here in the bottom of the fifth inning. This is our fifth inning home run bonus. For this inning only, today's Maryland Lottery hit a big contestant of the game. Gets $500 for any Orioles home run. Greg Rogers has already won $800. And for all the latest info on new games, current promotions, and second chance contests, visit MDLottery.com today. 
David Huff on for Hughes, who gave up a run on three hits over three plus innings. He didn't walk anybody, struck out three. Brian Roberts, a strikeout victim his first time up, gets a chance here. 1 0 delivery to him. And a strike called. One ball, one strike, one down. And late on that one, and a 1 2 count. Yeah, if you throw enough change ups at 81, 83, that 90 will look a lot firmer. And you know, the perfect point right there. 1 2 pitch tried to lay it in on the outside corner and missed. For Brian this year, hitting 256 right handed, 240 left handed. Three home runs, three out of five he's had from this side of the plate. And again, that fastball by him up high. Yeah, that looks like 110 if you can change speeds, and, and especially when you have that change up in your back pocket. And, and obviously, he chases one out of the zone. That's usually not what Brian does, but thought he could get the bat to it, just couldn't time it. 24,659, 24,659, the attendance here for game four of this set and the final game of this homestand. Nate McLeod takes it for a strike, two down, nobody on. McLeod has flied out to right field twice in the ball game. This one's going to go to second base. Cano's there to get it. That is a quick inning. Orioles are set down in order for the second time in the ball game, and the Yankees able to protect their four to one lead. Dave Johnson. Dave will sit down with Brady Anderson to talk about his 50 home run season and his thoughts on Chris Davis, plus daily updates on the pennant races, scouting reports, and Orioles news before the Birds face off against the Jays. That's tomorrow at 5 on Mass. She got the heavy bird on the top of that little face saying, Get some runs. See? There is an intense fan right there. <laughs> Orioles down by a score of four to one. Chen has walked two, struck out six. He's retired the last nine in a row. Last hit was that two RBI single by Wells in the third inning that extended the lead at the time to four nothing. The Orioles get one back in their half of the third to make it a four one game, and that's where we are. Here's Nunez, Manny Machado. Both teams anxious to go after that first pitch. One away, sixth inning. Final fireworks night of the season is coming to Oriole Park on Friday, September 27th. O's hosting the Red Sox. Be a great postgame show lighting up the Birdland skies, and it's part of Fan Appreciation Week. Final weekend of the regular season. 888 bird at Orioles.com for tickets. Fireworks Friday, September 27th.
Here is Mike Reynolds. Reynolds with a big blow in the second inning. Picked up the home run, 19 total on the year. Now two more RBIs for him, and he has struck out. Chen with the 0-1. The Orioles continue to give up more home runs than they hit, despite the fact the homers mattered so much for them here in this ballpark. They have uh, been out homered virtually all season long. One ball, one strike delivery, and Reynolds will follow back. Yeah, that was pretty simple, uh, Wayne. Just fell behind him, two and zero. Oh. He looked what for a fastball in the middle of the plate. He got a fastball in the middle of the plate, and the uh, Yankees were ahead two to nothing. The 111th home run hit by opponents in this ballpark. The Orioles have 103. One two delivery to Reynolds and that's foul back. He wanted to jump on that one. Well, again good velocity tonight just a little bit of a lack of command and it wasn't as much the base on balls. It was just the, the counts. Third inning there were a couple of base on balls and. But early on, it was just wild in the middle of the zone. One two breaking ball will bounce out in front. Two ball, two strike count. Mike Reynolds to be followed by Ryan. Like Show Walter, hoping his ball club can come back in this ball game as the Yankees have done against them. And a swing and a miss for a strikeout number seven. Yeah, totally different pitcher. Here's in the changeup, getting it over. And well out in front. Trying to time it, hard to do. Season high in strikeouts for way in is a nine. Came against Houston. His career high is 12. He's got seven in this game. Two down, nobody on. 11 in a row, set down. Ryan. Fielder's choice and he is struck out. Going after the first pitch for a strike. And an even 100 thrown in the ball game. 0 1 delivery. <laughs> Yankees go on from here to that three game series in Boston. They've got four against Texas coming up. It ought to be. Uh, let me take that back. They leave uh, from here and have looking at West Coast teams: San Francisco and Tampa Bay, and then Houston. So Chen rocking along. Little offense here, and Chen's doing the stuff that needs to be done on the mound. But the Yankees have the lead, four to one. Reynolds 19th home run a two run shot Nunez on with a two out two strike a base hit and then with the bases loaded Vernon Wells takes the first pitch into left field it would be four to nothing and then uh, Weeders with a single a wild pitch to second and uh, Manny Machado would get him in four to one Chen still I mean he's really straightened his act out use a brief three innings 
Well, he didn't get hit very hard. And uh, he leaves. Huff comes on for him. So four to one. Or Orioles trailing by three. David Huff still on the mound. It was the scheduled starter, but now out of the bullpen. And that is uh, Geico saving people money on more than just car insurance. Manny Machado will lead it off for the Orioles in the bottom half of the sixth inning, down four to one. Orioles only three hits in the game. They've all been singles. Machado has one of them, good for an RBI in the third inning. Pitch is there for a strike. You get this Yankee concluding schedule we were talking about here as the Yankees have the three against Boston. They too have a day off Monday. Then they will be playing uh, in Toronto. They come home to take on the Giants for three. They get another day off. Tampa Bay for three and they finish up in Houston. And fouled away. One ball two strike count on Manny Machado. Orioles with the one more long road trip. And three in Toronto starting tomorrow. Three in Boston and four against Tampa Bay. And then they come home and finish up. Three against the Jays and three against the Red Sox. And those are the concluding games for the O's. Yeah, they got to get back on the road like they what they go 45 and 36 last year. They're one game under this year. Jason Hamill kind of uh, in the middle. Right there, kind of tall of our high right. On the left is uh, Scott Feldman, Bud Norris. Lower right, Jason will get his first start in a while. He pitches well up in Toronto, and as you mentioned there. I mean, John Gibbons, you know they're going to come out and play, but not at full strength. And you just have to start playing, and you just got to win. And you got to do it, especially in Toronto, and tonight, score some runs. Chatter will get a short with a ground ball. Ryan, good play to get him in front of him. One down here in the sixth inning. When the Orioles win, everyone wins. And all season long, when the Orioles win and score five or more runs, you get 50% off regular menu price online orders at PapaJohns.com by entering promo code Orioles5. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's valid at participating Baltimore area Papa John. Chris Davis, he has singled and struck out. One down. Davis. Becoming the first Oriole to have 40 doubles, 40 homers in the same season. 49 total long balls, one more to reach the Oriole record. Held by Brady Anderson at 50, set in 96. And with his next home run, he'll become the third player in Major League history to have 50 homers and 40 doubles in a season, joining Babe Ruth and Albert Bell. Here's the 0-2 pitch to him, and that'll be outside. Yeah, I think Albert did it in 1995. Where the uh, Indians went to the World Series, lost to Atlanta. Foul back, count stays. One ball, two strikes on Davis. Well, Huff done a nice job and not overpowering, but certainly pitching well. I mean, I don't mean throwing, pitching. A nice mixture of uh, not too many breaking balls, but. There's one. He just loops that one out into left center field for a base hit. Soriano will get it into holding to a single. Chris Davis on two for three. This is a more gentle Chris Davis. This is your control two strike. The ball just stays up enough. And you could see him hit the back of the ball. What you're trying to do. Now all of a sudden one swing and you know Adam has had a tough series against the Yankees one swing. It doesn't have to be a home run hit one up the. I mean waffle one up the, the gap with Nick Marcakis on deck. And Adam leads the Orioles and homers in September he's got four. And the pitch will be taken for a strike. He's reached on an error popped out and uh, Adam Warren in the bullpen. And Warriors have already seen him twice in this series. Oh, one count, one away. Jones will take it inside for a ball. They've been a dynamic twosome. Most RBIs for the Orioles as a duo. You got Palmero and Bonilla. 
Mora Tejada. Eddie Murray, Cal followed by Powell, Frank Robinson, and then Davis and Jones. Here's the 1 1 delivery and a swing and a miss. Again, late on it. 1 and 2. Orioles need hits and a couple of extra base hits wouldn't hurt. With four singles. There are only hits on the board against Hughes and Huff. One, two. Jones to short. Ryan Pino. No runs and one hit, no errors, and nobody left on base. Six complete here at Camden Yards in our rain delayed game with the Yankees leading. Time before the ball game came out in this final game of the regular season against the Yankees. Buck Showalter, of the skipper, making the presentation of the broken bat. And how many of those has he busted? That beautiful sculpture presented to him as a gift from the Orioles. Thanking the uh, opposing team, the Orioles in the dugout. Part of what the inscription said presented by the Orioles in recognition of his tremendous career and the hundreds of bats he broke along the way. Oh. At least 100. Marvelous career, Hall of Fame career. And the Orioles didn't want to see that. Taking his jacket off. <laughs> Early. 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 Premature. Maybe he's going to pitch three innings tonight. And Stewart will take the ball down the line in right field. Chris Stewart, the catcher, has struck out, grounded out. He may have become part of baseball history tonight, striking out on two strikes. I wonder if anybody see. told him on the bench. Normally, you, you know, you sit on the bench and notice those things. Used to be there was always somebody assigned one of the coaches to keep track of ball strikes. It's a tedious task. Uh, but that there was no no movement by anybody to argue when he left and we showed you the replay where it sure looked like first pitch was a ball next to a strikes and he went back and sat down. I think he thought it was a strike though. And Jim Bolton. Well that's what he thought. Yeah. But well, that's why he went. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that was my point. And 0 2 delivery swung out of miss. This time you can go. That is a strikeout, and that is well, you're, nine you're, by Chen. Yeah, you're seeing Wei and Chen. This is the way he normally pitches. He uses all his pitches. This is a great changeup. I mean, it just stretches the strike zone. You do that just by getting ahead of the hitter, and uh, because they're going to chase. I don't care who you are. Hitters with two strikes, they will expand the strike zone some way, up or down, in or out. So Chen has equaled his career is a season high with nine strikeouts. He did that against Houston on July 30. So he said his career high is 12. Just outstanding work here by Chen. But the Yankees got four. And that may end that. Deep to right field, way back, and Curtis Granderson. Goodbye, home run. 
Chen surrenders another long ball with one down here in the seventh inning. Granderson makes it a 5-1 game. Now he just drops the head. So home run last night. Triple last night. Home run tonight. This is what he does when he's healthy. Take a look at our Lexus of Towson drive of the game. Yeah, he must be getting healthy. And he was late early in the game. I mean, Chen, I mean, does battle him. That's one thing you always know you're going to get from Wayne. Struggled in the innings two and three, a couple of runs each, and then gets the Orioles into the seventh. Drive of the game brought to you by Lexus of Towson, the Baltimore area's number one Lexus dealer. Come see why they're number one at LexusofTowson.com. A couple of home runs. I mean, he really made a lot of great pitches. It started on the first pitch of the game. He just got behind the Reynolds. He had a two run shot. And they got the bases loaded in the third. Was able, but in between, he's striking out nine guys. I mean, the stuff got better as the game uh, went on until Granderson just jumped on that one fastball. So there they are. I mean, not a horrible outing, but when you only get one run to work with, it really doesn't look too good. And I've been in that position. So. Josh Stinson will come on. Yeah, he's been up and down, what, about four times? He's got one start for the Orioles. He spent most of the year down at AAA. Stinson, fastball slider, change up guys, and there's the broken ball that almost gets Alex Rodriguez. Stinson, the 25 year old, picked up by the Orioles out of the Oakland organization, claimed off waivers in early April. Starter with the tide seven and six three seven eight ERA and Rodriguez takes it outside 13 in a row had been retired by Chen prior to the home run by Granderson with one down here in the seventh inning. Now Rodriguez up and Chen out and a 2 0 delivery and that is there for a strike so the Yankees five runs on seven hits the Orioles a run on four the Yankees batting in the seventh and a big run. Tampa's taking a 4 3 lead over the Red Sox. Boston batting top of the ninth inning in Tampa. And the pitch is there for a strike on the inside corner. That'll always be exciting with Fernando Rodney coming in for the Rays. There'll be at least two on, but he still may get the save. <laughs> two ball, two strike count. And A Rod did he go? Nope. And Hickox uh, first. I tell you, a lot of late life on this fastball, and the ball just kind of explodes and runs in, and he did swing. Certainly, the bat went far enough to call him out. I mean, you're still hunting for outs. You're down by four, but you can't bat until you get them out. 3 2 delivery on the way, and watching, which will make Buck even angrier. They don't get the call third strike and then the walk. 
Tickets are still available for each game in the final regular series of the year when the Orioles host the Red Sox Friday, September 27th through Sunday the 29th. Good seats won't last. The birds are in the hunt for the postseason berth. Final weekend of the season. Get your tickets in advance and save. 888-848-BIRD or go to Orioles.com. Oh, Oriole manager not happy as the walk keeps just the one out on the board. And the pitch taken for a strike Soriano, a double single, two for three in the ballgame. Oh, and one. Orioles looking for the ground ball. Try and get that double play here. He's got the kind of stuff. Uh, hard slider, sinking, running fastball. I mean, he can throw some ground balls. That one fouled off. Ostensi with an 0-2 count, and back goes Rodriguez. Rodriguez with a hammy problem, really not running well at all. He's on the base pass. He's just jogging out there. They want to keep him in the lineup. He's the DH. That's why he's not playing third. Keeping him off the field. Trying to protect that hamstring. Here's the 0-2 delivery. Went upstairs on it and fouled it back. Count will stay at two strikes. Hard to let go. And got that one up and got the swing on it for the strikeout. Well, it's got a good arm. I mean, he came up, got a start 24th of April against Toronto. Five innings, uh, five hits. Four of them happen to be home runs. Toronto can do that to you. It was here at Camden Yards. And right here, he just throws a high heater right by a real good fastball hitter. Still think Soriano. I mean, he hit the ball up, but I, his power. He can hit the low ball about as well as any right handed hitter in the league. Now Cano will stand in. He's picked up a single a walk and he is lined out. He's had four hits in 14 at bats in the series, three RBIs. Two down. That's going to be the short. Hardy's right there to haul it in. Perfectly positioned again. Seventh inning stretch time in our rain delayed game. The Yankees have a 5 1 lead. First stop's going to be Toronto and the Jays. Jason Hamill's going to take the mound against Todd Redman. Our coverage on Masson 2 HD 630 O's Extra presented by Chief, followed by game coverage at 7. All the access you need right here on Masson. Now you see the Jays. They lost tonight to the Angels 4 3. 
And now on 10 of their last 16 Reyes has been red hot having an outstanding year after getting back on the field. And there are there probably yeah, a couple of righties and then uh, Burley somehow. To come and uh, spend a one year with the Marlins comes back 11 and 8. Well, he's uh, managed to do what he usually does which is. Give you over 10 wins and pitch close to 200 innings. There's your line as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Runs, base runners, bullpen people. Nick Marquez has flied out to center field twice. The new dad back after they uh, greeted Toby Marquez, the new baby boy, and Christina into the family and back to finish out the season. Showed bunt yeah. trying to get on, and yeah. uh, it will be a foul ball. Yeah, I was just thinking if I'd ever manage that, because they give them the bunt, you got to figure out a way to get everybody to bunt and try to make it a fun drill. And it's obvious it's harder to simulate because even in batting practice, you know, you don't know if it's going to be a breaking ball or whatever. But when they put the shifts on like they do now, and you're down by four runs, Nick did exactly what you needed to do. He just doesn't do it often enough. To probably be as successful as he could be, or any of them. And just one of those little things. If they want to put that shift on, if they want to play their uh, third baseman back to almost at shortstop level, drop one down, get on, put the pressure on. Makes sense. Yeah, anything at this point, because the Orioles have had only four singles in the game. So, but this point started in April and it really starts back in February. So I think. You know, I look at Nate McLeod. I know how hard it is to get guys out that can run like he did. Take it in the air to right field. It's deep. Wells turns around, looking back, and goodbye. Home run from the butt to the homer. Nick Marquez delivers the long ball and cuts the Yankee lead to 5 2. Well, he backspin that ball like a home run hitter. Well, we haven't seen that very often. Not since uh, June 24, second home run since then, but there's number 10. And it got out of here easily. I mean, he just kind of backspins and it sails out of here. And he knows it's gone. So the Orioles get one of them back here in the seventh inning, and that will be it for Huff. He is out of the ball game. Yankees turn to the bullpen, and the Orioles will try and make a big thing out of the seventh. Outs on a Monday, an inning on Tuesday. Orioles winning four to two, and then losing uh, on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. So he comes in, and Larry Rothschild was saying, you know, he had a couple of starts early on. He can start, he can relieve. You can see lefties hit him better, so probably a better situational guy. What I liked about him, he had a nice little movement on his uh, fastball, nice little changeup, and uh, sharp breaking. Little slider swerve type pitch, so can be very effective, and he'll match up against the right-handed Valencia. Danny coming up to the plate. 
made an out when he got the hit off of Huff, but hit it really hard to left field. Good job by Huff. Uh, the three innings plus a run, two hits, no walks, strikeout. Orioles do not have a walk in the ball game. And Valencia will take it for a strike. 26-year-old right-hander for the Yankees. Trying to work through this game is Girardi with these pitchers. That one in the air to right, a long, long run for Wells. He'll get over there and make the catch. One away, seventh inning. The video game that puts you in the owner's suite is now available free on iPhone and iPad. Build your stadium and make the decisions to guide your team to the World Series. Download MVP Ballpark Empire free today. Data and usage rates may apply. What was that luxury tax the Yankees going to have to pay? Twenty-eight million. I don't want to be on that team. You don't want to be on that team? No, I don't want to own it. Well, you make a lot of money if you own your own television network. And uh, yeah. okay, I'm taking it back. Okay, I want to own them. <laughs> <laughs> Got to look at the big picture. Got to have the spreadsheets in order to make those decisions. <laughs> But I think the Yankees are agreeing with you since they're going to cut that payroll down to 189 million come heck or high water next year. And the pitch is taken for a strike. Here's Hardy. He's flying up and hit into a fielder's choice. One ball, one strike count. Well, we were right. Fernando Rodney put two on in the ninth inning against the Red Sox, but he won. So Tampa Bay has come away with the victory over Boston by a score of 4 3. That one just concluded. Well, the Rays get a win they needed. They are the team in that second wild card spot that the Yankees, Orioles, Cleveland, Kansas City are all chasing. 1 2 delivery, and that will miss down low. Hardy with a two ball, two strike count. Get their lefty going in the bullpen. Cabral up. Their lefty experience is about zero oh, yeah. without Boone Logan. 2 2 delivery on the way, and that'll be fouled back. Yeah, you can see Warren, and then he comes out of North Carolina where I mean, he went 32 and 4. So in the minor leagues, not wow numbers as far as winning 6 and 8 at the Triple A, 11, 12, 7 and 8, but low ERAs. And a lot of strikeouts, not a lot of walks, and somehow able to keep the ball in the ballpark. So pretty good numbers at the Triple A level. That's going to be a base hit into left field. So Hardy is on, and the Orioles get ever closer to getting the potential tying run in this game to the plate. One down, one on. This copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Orioles may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Orioles. They kind of love those at bats and I'm sure J.J. Hardy's a little late on 94 the fastball velocity and then he throws him a change up and he's right on it. Scouting report says get him out with soft stuff. You don't read the bat. And the Orioles get a little bit more of an opportunity to get back in the game. And here is Waiters. Matt has picked up a single, one for two, scored a run. Machado, an RBI single. Marquecas, the home run for the two Oriole runs. Reynolds has had a two run homer. Wells has had a two RBI single and a home run by foul back. Granderson has given the Yankees their 5 2 lead. Waiters to be followed by Roberts with the Orioles batting here in the seventh inning. Cleveland romping over the White Sox 14 to 2 halfway through that ball game. So the Indians may get a laugher tonight. 1 1 and the pitch down and into him and a one ball two strike count on Waiters. Ball game last night. The Yankees won 5 4. They're 26 one run win. They are 26 and 15. They're doing what the Orioles did last year in one run games. They lead the majors in the one run win percentage scale. And Waiters a little chopper foul. Last year the Yankees were 22 and 25. This year they're 26 and 15. Orioles, of course, had the 29 wins 
in one run ball games last year so vital to making it to the postseason this year they've got 16. Yeah, they were great also at 25 uh, two run wins with 14 losses last year so the somewhat close games they went into 16 extra inning games without losing. Ooh, nice take there. Tall guy high knees you take that pitch and hope. Two balls and two strikes on Weeders. Hardy on at first base. And Matt will take that one as well. So the Orioles, Weeders, if he can get on here, will bring Roberts up as the potential tying run in the ball game in the seventh inning as they try and edge this thing along to that point. Marquegas getting the homer to lead off the inning, making it 5 2. And he took that breaking ball like he really saw it. 3 2 delivery on the way, and he's on. That is the first walk picked up by the Orioles in the ballgame. So they'll probably get another righty to get up with Cabral. We've already seen Sean Kelly in two out of his three games. Saw Dave Robertson has had some shoulder discomfort last night. Two on, one out. Brian Roberts has struck out twice, four for 12 in this series. Orioles only two chances with runners in scoring position. In the air, center, not deep. Granderson late start, but he's got it. And Roberts is retired. Two down. Here comes Girardi. Nate McClough, the left hander, would be due up. You got to believe there'll be some response here with the big bench that Mike Showalter has to the bringing in of a left hander. So another pitching change here in the seventh inning. The Orioles have pushed a run in on the Marquegas homer. Have two on, but there are two down. And we'll get a pinch hitter coming to the plate when we come back. Michael Morse. And try and get the one out that he needs to end the seventh inning. So, yeah, a, a left hander missed all of last year uh, with the elbow surgery. So, this will be his third appearance. Major League de debut back on the 2nd of uh, September. Scoreless inning. And then uh, did pitch against the Red Sox. Came in with the bases loaded and uh, faced one batter, struck him out. Big guy, 6'3, out of the Dominican, 250 pounds. That's, at least that's what he's listed. Average fastball around 90, 92.7 somewhere, of anywhere between 91 and 93. A little bit of a slider and doesn't throw a lot of changeups, but if he does, it's going to be to hitters like Michael Morse, the right-handers. 
So Morse will come on as the pinch hitter for the Orioles. Runners on at first and second base. And there are two down. Morse since coming over to the Orioles for just these kind of situations. 20 at bats. He's had three hits all singles. Looking for his first RBI as an Oriole. Cabral's delivery to him and a swing and a foul ball. Hardy down at second base with a single. Weeders with a walk is the base runner at first. There are the two ducks on the pond. Morris represents the potential tying run in the ball game against the 24 year old left hander. And the first thing he does is drop Papa off a little nice changeup. And he got it in a pretty good location. The brawl has worked a total of one and a third innings this year. Pitch will be taken inside and low. And a one ball, one strike count. Well, the Orioles would love Michael Morris to do what we've seen Alex Rodriguez do, Soriano do, is which is fly out into the seats and right. He's got tremendous power out over the plate. One ball, one strike. Another one outside again an off speed delivery and the count goes to two and one. Yeah you could see uh, Frankie Rodriguez getting loose for the Orioles. So Stewart went in he's going to come out to the mound because he missed his target by about three feet. And you made a great point that this is not how they envisioned the end of. The middle of September end of the season going without Boone Logan with the elbow problems and there is David Robertson. There's and Logan may be gone for the year. Yeah. They. Uh, they don't have a lot of hope that he's going to get back, so that's a costly loss for the Yankees left hander in the bullpen. So you can kind of get an idea what this scouting report says about Michael M Morris. Get him out with breaking stuff, and of course, can your 24 year old kid with an inning in the third in the big leagues do that? 2 1 delivery on the way to him, and that's going to be a ground ball to short played by Ryan. He'll go to first. He did. So Morris retired as the pinch hitter. The Orioles will get a run on two hits, no errors, two are left on base. Seven complete and a 5 2 Yankee lead. Nick Marquez has delivered uh, the home run. That was the second run for the Orioles. Chris Davis, he's had a couple of hits, two singles in the ball game. And Mark Reynolds, the former Oriole, picking up a home run in the second inning, his 19th and two RBIs. Text in your vote A, B, or C to 31826. Michael Moore stays in the ball game in left field after hitting for McClouth, who's been playing out there. Lyle Overbay he is going to start the inning out. He'll be the pinch hitter with Josh Stenson, the right hander, staying on. Yeah, so you get your matchup and then you uh, can also improve your defense. Lyle can really pick it over at first. Terrific year for him. Another one of the uh, Brian Cashman, the uh, general manager of the Yankees after the injury to the sheriff. 
Got him at the end of spring trainings. Tried to make uh, the Red Sox. Got released. Next thing you know, he's wearing pinstripes. And Wells did a good job in this spot. He had a two RBI single in the third inning with the base loaded. One for three for Vernon Wells. Over Bay hits for him. Since it came on to get the final two outs in the seventh inning, here's the 0 1. Over Bay will take that for a strike. Five runs, seven hits, one error for the Yankees. A couple of runs for the Orioles. They've had six hits in the ball game. Each team has left five on base. And Over Bay will take that one up high. Eighth inning here at Camden Yards. With the ball game starting late, Orioles no. Tampa Bay has won their ball game. Oakland's won their game. Cleveland going to get a W. Pitch will be taken outside. Go for both of these ball clubs. Right in front of them. Two ball, two strike count on Overbay. And Overbay. Fouls it off. Souvenir down the left side this time. One of the veterans who's helped carry the ball club with all the injuries through this season. That if uh, they did indeed do make it to the postseason, will be talked about. Likes of Overbay. Ichiro. He's going to be a starter, but has really helped out. He's had to be in and out of the lineup. Talking the other night, you almost forget Kevin Euclid mm -hmm. yeah. was on the Yankees. Yeah. I mean, there was someone who was supposed to play a major role for the Yankees, only played in 28 games and had 105 at bats. He ended up signing uh, Travis Hafton. He played well early, then she hurt his shoulder. That's where they were playing him, right behind second base. Hardy's got it. Over Bay is retired. In a major league notebook, we thought we'd take a look around. What are the other cities saying about things going on with their ball clubs? Oh, and the Royals, Kansas City Star said season ticket holders who got possessed, who got postseason ticket information the other day, probably the first such notice in close to 30 years, and they can't quite afford to purge them. <laughs> Don't throw them away. In St. Louis, the post dispatch Cardinals try to close out with one of the youngest rotations they've ever had. Doesn't mean they'll finish strong, but we have to like what we've seen to this point. Well, they have one of the hardest throwing back ends of the bullpen. When you talk to them. My good friend Gordon Lakey's in. He said, "Boy, do they have an impressive guys. I mean, guys that are throwing 98 to 100 miles per hour, really helping that young rotation. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's going. Pitch will be inside. I mean, kind of a surprise, I think, for baseball fans. You talk about the great bullpens this year. Kansas City and the Cardinals probably have the two best bullpens going. One ball, one strike count to Nunez." Nunez scored single second and in came around one for three. Well, you go back to we talked about that uh, four game series in Kansas City right after the All Star break, or a week after, and the Orioles won the first. But one of those three wins for Kansas City, the Orioles had, I guess, the uh, the go ahead and the tying run at, at third off of Greg Holland, and they didn't end up scoring. I mean, it, it was unbelievable. You got to run in, and, and then all of a sudden, with nobody out runners in second and third, you, you couldn't put any runs on the board. That's how good he is. Yep. And he's had a great yeah. season. He's yeah. continued it. Yeah, one of those really low batting averages of the first hitters. One of the uh, best. And one of the keys when you come in, especially if you're coming in to pitch a clean inning, in other words, nobody on. Is what I was talking about all year long. We talked about Jim Johnson, Mariano Rivera. They are tied for first and saves with 43. Holland, 42. And then Joe Nathan of the Rangers is uh, 39. Yeah, 39. So that'll go to short. Hardy's got that one as well. And a great pick at first base. Yeah, same oh, there. Davis gets the out. Yeah, we talk about that all the time. J.J. Hardy can take him. Because how rarely, I mean, it's pretty routine. But he, he doesn't bounce it. But, that, I mean, that is not a short hop. It's about as good as it gets at first base. Look how far out in front. And it skids on the grass. Didn't even hit the dirt. And then somehow, 
It keeps the. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Save my rear end. That's how you win gold gloves. You got somebody receiving. Just Ooh. ask anybody that ever threw over to Teixeira. How oh, it's nice or Boog or Eddie Murray, some of the uh, guys that I had a chance to play with. Big targets, soft hands. When I came up, Boog Powell played left field. Mm -hmm. He was a left fielder for the Orioles for a moment, and then uh, moved over to first base. Mike Reynolds up. By the way, uh, Gold Glove mention is certainly going to be uh, include Chris Davis, and over there at first base, his 996 fielding percentage. He's among four tied for first in that department at first base. That ball's outside from Stinson. Reynolds, the big two run homer, his 19th came in the second inning. He has struck out since. That pretty much tells the tale of Mark Reynolds when he was with the Orioles and wherever he is. It's a long ball and strikeouts. That's why he'll probably be hitting 3 0 here. Real count from Stinson with two down, nobody on in the eighth inning. He was in the air, right field, Mark Hakus. And Nick's got it for the out. So Stinson has a one, two, three inning. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Machado, Davis, and Jones do up for the Orioles. $50 supporting the Y of Central Maryland's Fit and Fun program. To date, there have been 367 walks for a total of $18,350. Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield encourages each of us to take that first step towards a healthier and more active lifestyle. So, Dave Robertson, the winner last night, comes on, pitches an inning, a couple of hits, and uh, Really can pitch. Three earned runs last 31 and two thirds innings. A lot of strikeouts. Talking about the long stride. Very deceptive wind up. Really good curveball. Great cutter. You see the average very low at 203. Only keeps it in the park. Righties hit him better than lefties, at least from the, the long ball. So he is your setup guy to uh, get to Rivera. And he's done a terrific job. The defensive changes for the Yankees as we go to the bottom after the eighth inning. Mark Reynolds goes from first to third. Lyle Overbay, a pinch hit, stays in at first. And Ichiro will go into right field. Wells came out for a pinch hitter. So, bottom of the eighth inning with the Orioles down by three. And Robertson on the mound uh, this season against the Orioles. His record is 2 and 0. Oh. This is the eighth game he's appeared in. Given up no runs, five hits, and seven and a third innings, one walk, and ten strikeouts. The Orioles this year have hit 192 against him. So let's see how the shoulder is. That was the uh, the dilemma, so shoulder uh, inflammation so treatment. We're talking on Monday, and thought he would be back in this series, and he was last night. Manny Machado will lead it off against him. So the middle of the Orioles lineup. He has an RBI base hit one for three in the game four for 15. 
in the series. Manny, one hit, four at bats against Robertson. And fouls it back. And that was last night. He, he led off the inning. They threw him a pretty good curveball, but it was down a little bit in, and he just hit a line drive into left field. There are the numbers fast. I sprays it around for a young hitter, 21 years old, out of the minor leagues. Hitting better here at the big leagues than he did in the minors. Yankees working this game through with pitchers out of that bullpen. Use the starter. Three innings, a run on three. Huff, three innings, a run on two. And then Warren, two thirds of an inning, a hit, a walk. Cabral came on, the left hander, to get just one out. He did. And now Robertson. This game's gone the way Girardi had planned it so far. Here's the 0-2 delivery on the way, and that ball is deep to left field. At the wall, and up it is! Go caught! What a catch by Soriano! And a tip of the cap from his teammates as Soriano robs Manny Machado of a home run. Well, even if you obviously you want the Royals want the home run, but once again, the Yankees. Soriano known for his bat. And gets to a great route to get to the ball. And cushions himself. Must have been a bat. And look, look at Robertson. What a catch. The defensive play of the ball game so far. No question that ball was out. And Soriano not only doing it at the plate for the Yankees since being acquired, but now a home run that really would have changed the complexion of this ball game. Instead, one out in the eighth inning. Here's Davis, two for three, couple of singles for Chris. 1 0 delivery, and that is a strike. One ball, one strike count. And Robertson will get that one in and go ahead on the count one and two. Davis, 0 for 8. Lifetime off Robertson. Yankee dugout was up. The Oriole dugout rather up and ready to cheer. And waiting to see whether that ball was caught. One two delivery will be away two and two. Yeah off the bat it didn't even look like it was going to be close. Wow. <laughs> the play to be remembered. Final couple of weeks of this season. Here's a 2 2 delivery and a swing and a miss and a tag put on. So Robertson will get the strikeout two down. Yeah, that's one of the many ways he can get you out the cutter, the fastball, and then the hook. He's got a real good one. And where do you want to throw it with two strikes? You want to throw it where you pretty much can bounce it. And that's what he does. With a low target. Think about Chris Stewart for a big kid, and he's about 6'3, six, 6'4. Six, he does give you a low target. He gets down with the best of them. And here is Adam Jones. 0 for 3 in the ball game, reached on an error. Two down, nobody on. Jones has had a tough series, Adam, with only one hit in 14 at bats. And for Adam, pretty good numbers off Robertson. 5 for 16, two home runs. 0 1 delivery with the bases empty here, and misses down low, 1 1. Here's the 1 1 delivery. Jones up the middle. He's got a base hit. So Adam on with a single. We're going to go back to Manny Machado's at bat here this inning. This is the first pitch of the at bat. Watch Manny Machado on this swing. See him turn away in that left leg. 
when he came off limping. Trainer Richie Van Sels met him over there in the dugout. And he headed back to the clubhouse. There he is. We'll see if he comes back out to play. Here is Nick Marquegas. Jones on at first base with two down. And that'll be up high for a ball. Yeah, this is, uh, and we talked about Dave Robertson. Anytime you get tendonitis, you get it treated, you might take some anti inflammatories. But this doesn't have the crispness that he, that he did with his pitches last night. And you saw that with Manning, almost just missed a home run. Jonesy hits it really hard back up the middle. Here's the 1 0 delivery, and that pitch will be taken. So for Marquegas, came up in that seventh inning, tried to bunt his way on, didn't get it into fair territory, ended up hitting the home run, and you know, Toby, that's for you. For the new baby boy. 2 0 count. And that'll be fouled off right at the plate. Here's the long ball. And it just backspins it. It's the part of, bottom part of the ball, and that's how you get the ball to travel. It's pretty much a, a no doubt about it right off the bat head. Two ball, one strike count. Marcakis with a two for 12 off Robertson in his career. Jones at first base, or is down 5-2. And he'll go the other way with a foul ball. That'll even the count up. Two balls, two strikes. Off to Toronto. It'll be a late arrival for the Orioles and then the ever anticipated customs. Jason Hamill and Todd Redmond will go at it in game number one tomorrow night. Chris Tillman, Ismail Rogers in game two. Miguel Gonzalez, Mike Burley are scheduled to go in game three. Two balls, two strikes, and two down. And Marquegas works it full. The Robertson up high with it. Three ball, two strike count. Over Bay will move behind the runner at first base. Ryan, the shortstop, will back up into shallow center field. Robertson 3 2 runner going. Marquegas is going to get a base hit into left field. Jones turns. He'll stay at second base. And the Orioles will get the potential tying run to the plate here in the eighth inning. Marquegas with a two hit ball game, two for four. If you're Joe Girardi, do you think about going one more time to Mariano a little earlier? Well, he's not up, so. Well, the great thing about it is you, you with one swing, and Valencia certainly, you know, lately it's been mostly against lefties, but early on in the year, first, first four home runs, uh, three of them were against right handed pitching. Two on, two down. Valencia, deep left center field, and goodbye, home run! The Orioles have tied it up! Eighth inning, a three RBI shot by Valencia. It is 5-5. Five -five. It's all about getting good pitches to hit and then not missing them. And when Danny Valencia came to the big leagues, you couldn't throw a fastball by him. And right here, take a look. A little cutter in the middle of the plate. He backspins it into the bullpen. And the Orioles make it a 5-5 game. And did he sting it? Robert.
Robertson taking a bite out of the glove because he knew when that came off the bat he was in trouble. And the pitch is in there for a strike. So Robertson saved by Soriano in the first batter Machado who had a home run taken away from him. Then has Valencia deliver the number eight of the year with two on to tie it up with two down. And that ball's going to be in the gap, and Robertson just does not have it, and the Orioles, Orioles are so lacking him. Hardy will go to second base, the potential go ahead with a double. Well, it's tough to get people out when you're not healthy. And it's rather obvious back to back nights. They backed him off for about four days because of shoulder problems. And this guy, I mean, he's got special stuff. Tonight, he doesn't have it, and the Orioles are taking advantage. Not but Chamberlain, who's been struggling, he gets loose. He is not ready to come into the ballgame. And Joe Girardi has sent Rothschild out to draw some time for the pen. Does not you can understand why he's not why he's reluctant to go to Mariano Rivera. They've asked Rivera now a couple of times this month to do what he doesn't do, and that's come in early before the ninth inning and get six or four outs in a ball game, and they don't like to do that. There's Rivera with a jacket on. Valencia the three-run homer. In the game tied. And now Matt Weeder's a chance to give the Orioles a lead. Robertson and the pitch is in there for a strike to it. So the Orioles a big eighth inning with three runs in. The Orioles doing it late. As they got one in the seventh inning, they've added three more in the eighth. They've tied it up. Well, he has other ways, and maybe this is what uh, Larry Rothschild was talking about, the pitching coach, is getting you out, and that's one of them is a curveball. We just saw first pitch curveball, first strike. Waiters three for nine with a home run off him. With one on one. Or maybe one of those things where Larry comes out and says, okay, you got a good curveball. You may not have that extension because of the tendonitis in your shoulder. Use your cutter. Kind of pitch around the zone and try to get him out with curveballs. We'll see if that's the case. Runner at second, Hardy, 1 1 delivery. Leaders down the line, deep and foul. And that didn't miss no. by much. Well, that's when Matt hits his best from this side of the plate, when he stays on, uses the whole field, waits that extra second. Has seemingly been true in this series. You don't want to have the lead late in the game. Here's the one two delivery. Weeders on a swing and a miss, and that will end the inning. But the Orioles on Danny Valencia's eighth home run of the season tie it up. Three coming in on that one, and the Orioles now with a 5 5 ball game going to the ninth inning.
Outback Steakhouse. It's always fresh in the Outback. And by Antwerp and Toyota. Come to Antwerp and take the gas test today. Visit any Antwerp and dealership and find out if you pass. Gary Thorne, Jim Palmer, as you go to the ninth inning, Oriole Park at Camden Yards, and Danny Valencia, as big a hit as he's had, a three RBI homer in that eighth inning off Robertson to tie the game up. The Oriole closer to pitch. Yeah, you bring him in, uh, you know, bring in your best pitcher out of your bullpen. You try to uh, keep it scoreless, and then you uh, win it in the bottom of the ninth inning. So that's the philosophy. Not a save situation, but uh, certainly. Job the same, just get three outs and get your guys to the plate. Yankees bat, Ryan up. And the pitch is taken for a strike. Stegerson has come on to play in left field. Morse out, third left fielder the Orioles have had tonight. Brendan Ryan, the 0 for 3. Ryan's had an 0 for 7 in the series. 8, 9, and 1 will be due up against Jim Johnson. Jim this year against the Yankees. This is game number eight. Six and a third innings. Three runs, two earned on six hits. One one delivery, and that'll be a base hit into right field. So there's the first hit for Ryan as a Yankee, a leadoff single here in the ninth. Updating you in the voting for the AT&T player of the game. Nick Marquegas on top right now. Still time to text in your vote A, B, or C. 31826. Results on the O's Extra Post Game Show. And here is Nick. He delivered that home run. They got it started in the seventh inning. And then one in the seventh, three in the eighth to tie. So they'll be bunning here. Machado way in charging. Johnson's got to play at second. Oh. Threw it away into center field. Jones throws back. Runner gets back. So Ryan going down. Ball over the head of everyone. And Jones backing it up gets it back in. Yeah, he just couldn't get a handle on it. I mean, he gets to it very quickly. And you could just see. I mean, it's not a very good bunt. Right back to him. And then just drops his arm. Doesn't take a crow hop. And then what happens is when you drop the elbow, ball's going to get elevated. So the good news is, it doesn't go any farther than second. That's the only part of the good news. So you probably would have gotten the force, made the right play, just didn't execute the throw. Nice play by Adam Jones. That's why backing up is so important. Now the Yankees here in the ninth inning have two on. Nobody out. And here's Granderson who's delivered a home run. Granderson one for three. He's one for 11 off Johnson. He's butting. Tried to push it down to third. And fouls it off for a strike. So a sacrifice and an error for Stewart. Both managers go with what you got right here. Well, I found that kind of strange. As hot as Granderson is, and see if he's going to bunt again. Yeah. Machado is in at third. He dies, drop, and uh, stayed away, and it's a ball. He hit the home run in the seventh inning, his sixth. A solo shot leading it off. He has flyed out, struck out. The Yankees lost their center fielder Gardner after one at bat, a left oblique problem that took him out. After he was called out on strikes in the first inning, Granderson came on to play. Here's the 1 1 delivery, still buddy. Drops a good bunt. Johnson's got to go to first, and we'll get the out there with Roberts covering. Sacrifice for Granderson. Well, I, guess, yeah, I guess Joe just says, we'll take our two shots. We'll decide. I can't imagine they're going to pitch around A Rod. I don't care how hot it's been. You, Jim Johnson, the way he sinks it, he's a ground ball pitcher. You, your Buck Showalter, you bring your guys in and you hope he throws a ground ball. And as the baseball gods would have it, baseball is great theater. Here it is. Alex Rodriguez, the DH, batting second. A couple of walks. He scored a run. He's 0 for 2 in the ball game. 5 for 14 in the series with a couple of home runs. Infield is in. One down. Rodriguez will take it inside. 
There you see with a man on third and less than two outs with a rod scoring one of six times. That's the status here. At third base is Ryan. Not particularly fast, just regular speed. Stewart on at second base. Ball game tied at five. 1 0 delivery is fouled off. A rod against Jim Johnson, 4 for 17. And Jim can get you, especially in this situation, because you, I'm not saying you're going to intentionally walk him, but you do have first base open, so you make your pitch. Now, that could be a curveball, a changeup. His changeup acts like a split finger fastball because it goes down when he throws it well. You get a lot of ground balls out of it. And the fans have waited out the hour and 18 minute rain delay in this one, have gotten the show, and it's fire from over. One ball, one strike, one down. Rodriguez asking for the timeout. Here's the 1 1 delivery. In the dirt, and a run's going to score. A wild pitch. Ryan crosses, and the Yankees are back on top. Six to five. Now change up in one of those innings and goes about 58 feet. Matt Breeders, I mean, can't even get his body in front of it. Just did not anticipate that. And there's Ryan after his single. I mean, look how far, maybe even 57 feet. That is the first wild pitch by Jim Johnson this year. A run in and moves Stewart over to third base and takes the count to two and one. The intentional pass now will be issued to Rodriguez to set up a potential double play with Soriano coming up. Yeah, that way you can try an obvious point here. You just play your infield back and a lot easier to defend that. Ryan Mattis in the Orioles bullpen. Yeah, with Cano on deck and There'll be a pinch runner coming on as Rodriguez, as the DH, will be coming out of the ball game. Zelio Amante will come on to run. So the Yankees get a run in here in the ninth inning. First and third, one away. Soriano, a double single, two for four. And for Alfonso Soriano, and he's faced Johnson only once, 0 for 1. Ground ball is what's needed here by the Orioles. And inside to him for a ball. So the Orioles are going to have to do it again in the ninth inning. They got it tied up. Three runs in the eighth. Yankees get one so far here in the ninth. Twice almost hitting him and 2 and 0. Oh. Well, when you're struggling like this, you just cannot get him behind it. So off to the side of the ball. Well, you'd like to keep your thumb behind the ball so it can find your release point up, but obviously having trouble doing that here in the ninth inning. 2 0 delivery. Soriano's going to go up the middle. Hardy's going to be right there. There's one. Roberts the relay and a big double play. They get the ground ball and the out. But a run scores. One hit, a wild pitch. The Orioles come up in the bottom of the night, trailing by one.
Jim Johnson over to watch hoping the offense now can pick it up in the bottom of the ninth inning and as you would expect here's Mariano. So Rivera yeah. coming on to try and do it one more time to the Orioles. This will be three consecutive ball games with the saves in the last two last night did give up the run and the two hits but had a two run cushion not the case tonight. Oh well, the 651. And I guess uh, will Buck Showalter. What did he say? They ended up giving him a bronze bat mm -hmm. with a ball that you know with the bat indicating that he, all the bats he had broken. He said I really like to give him a blown save tonight. Well, it's is his chance. Back. Yeah. Of course, Buck can't do much about that except watch. No, <laughs> no, no, no. You rather not not even see him tonight, which usually means you might have a chance to win. So, so Rivera comes on, looking to become the leader in the American League in saves and in a ball game. Where the Orioles need to come back. One of those where the Yankees so far have reached in and grabbed a hole of the Orioles' heart. Yeah, so all these are cutters right here, and then this is that little two seamer, and you can see the average uh, at 4.29. So he doesn't use it very much. Doesn't really have to use it very much. He uses his cutter. He'll start him, start it, uh, the lefties off the plate, try to catch the outside corner, and when he's able to do that, that's when he keeps running it in on your fist. Brian Roberts will lead it off against him. In the nine spot, then Roberts will take it for a strike. Brian 0 for three in the ball game. Dickerson and then Machado are due up for the O's here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Here's the 0-1 delivery, and that'll be way inside. Two veterans who've seen a lot of one another over the years, and Brian Roberts has good numbers against him. Seven for 20 against Rivera. One ball, one strike count. Brian holds up on it. It'll miss two and one. A yeah, nice take. He had the the RBI last night against Mariana. What a, like a ten or eleven uh, pitch at bat. Finally dumped a single down the right field line and that would make it five to four. Here's a two one delivery and that's there. This year Rivera against the Orioles. He's lost a game. Six out of seven in saves. Has given up three runs, seven hits, and seven and a third innings. So for Mariano Rivera, will this be the final time against the Orioles ever? Down to first base. Taken to the bag by Overbay, out number one. One down, Chris Dickerson coming to the plate. Dickerson came on to play left field. This will be the first at bat for him in the ball game. And a swing and a miss. Rivera trying to finish out his time against the Orioles with his 80th save in 89 chances. And they were teammates last year. That was a little bit about Chris Dickerson. Chopper. Rivera going to cover, won't need to. Cano plays it to Overbay, and there are two down. So you, you notice how against Roberts, he started him off out over the plate, brought it back, and against somebody he knows as a former teammate, just threw it in on his fist. Same result. Not done yet. Manny Machado robbed of a home run his last time up by Soriano, literally went. Into the first row on a jumping catch in left field. Two down, nobody on. Machado 0 for 2 off Rivera. And the pitch inside for a ball. Ironically, it looks like Robertson could be the winning pitcher if Mariano gets the save. Robertson gave up three runs, four hits in an inning. Here's the 1 0 delivery and a cut on the ball and stayed up. 1 0 1. See, every once in a while, and that was every once in a while, throw it straight. 
So this ball actually takes off a little bit and. I see Manny trying to stop couldn't do it. So we've got two strikes to work with. And pops it up. First base over Bay. Ball game series is over. And a devastating loss for the Orioles. They come up with three runs in the eighth can hang on to it. The Yankees take the series three out of four. They take the season series for the 16th consecutive year, 10 games to nine. And the Orioles conclude a homestand at four and four. Robertson gets the win. Jim Johnson will take the loss, and Rivera will get the save. And there's your final the Yankees six, and the Orioles five. Orioles take to the road. Toronto. Jason Hamill on the mound against Todd Rudman. Game one tomorrow night. Coverage on Mass and 2 HD begins at 6.30 with those extra presented by Jeep. Followed by game action at 7. This has been a massive presentation. Jim and Ray Coe's extra presented by PNC coming up right now. The next time you see the Orioles, they will be in Toronto. For Jim Palmer and all of our crew, I'm Gary Thorne. Adieu.